field is in turn three. The pace car is in. Joey Logano will lead them to the green flag from Rusty Wallace. We're underway. Good right now, Jeff, and I think it goes back to what I was saying about the temperature in the tires. Had a lot of laps around their pacing while they tried to pit road off to get some grip in those tires. Yeah, I think those pace laps actually did these good years good, and, the, and these competitors kind of had an idea of what they might have uh, as far as grip wise in those first couple corners. So, yeah, look good. And I tell you, one guy, the 47 right there, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he jumped to the outside, took advantage of some cars running slower around that bottom, sort of tiptoeing to see what kind of grip they had. He made up some spots. So, a green racetrack, how long will it take before they can work that top groove in? Well, it's out of necessity. You can't get down. You, there's no option. Yeah. You know, you're in your, you're begging that spotter to tell me, hey, Look at this pass for the lead right here. When Denny Hamlin, I was going to say, didn't get a great start. It seemed like the, the, he spun the tires at the green, but boy, that car has come to him in a hurry here under green. And I saw the back end of the 22 of Logano step out sideways, so a little bit of uh, lack of rear grip off the corner, but not for the 11, our new leader, Denny Hamlin. Seventh place. Well, I talked about Stenhouse. I think what actually happened, he lost some spots because of what happened at the at the start. He made a couple of them back, but now you see that car really starting to fade. Hey, Jeff, I actually didn't see the pass for the lead with Denny Hamlin because I was watching his teammate right there making moves in the 18 of, of Kyle Busch. That, that camp seems to have the speed right now for sure. Front six cars break away just a bit. Let's get back to 18th. Austin Dillon, Eric Jones. Oh, well, you look at the sparks when they slam on the brakes. Eric Jones gets on the brakes in that left front. Here's a battle for second place. See the left front glowing on William Byron as he's trying to make this pass on Joey Logano. And you can see how tight it is. Joey letting him have the spot right there. But man, you get that inch, you get that run, you got to take it. At a short track like this, you can't be too patient. You got to go a little bit. And what I see as we ride on board here on the bumper cam, Alex Bowman. Is, is I see Joey Logano doesn't have the best race car to start this race. He's trying to be real patient, let it come to him. 12th place teammates at Roush Fenway Racing, Chris Busch or Ryan Newman, Michael McDowell looking in, Kurt Busch, and Bell. You break up, bring a great point up, Jeff. And, and when I won that race back in 18, I was way too loose the front side of that run. There's so many times if I start this race and that thing takes off like gangbusters and you got a really good pull on the wheel of leaning on that right front, I'm in trouble. I know I'm going to have to free this thing up as the track rubbers out. Yeah, there's no question. That's what we saw in June. The car just got tighter and tighter and tighter as the rubber got laid down, just would not turn. So I wouldn't count. What I'm saying is don't count on Joey Logano out just yet. Kevin Harvick just took a spot away uh, from Ricky Stenhouse, who now battles his teammate Ryan Priest side by side, and Priest moves into the top ten. Up to fourth place. Ryan Blaney on the outside. Well, this and Priest pulls through. Hey, all those modified laps paying off for him, Mike. That's true, Jeff. He led a lot of that race here uh, Thursday night, but they lost a lap in the pits. He was scheduled to go to Thompson, Connecticut for tomorrow's race, but due to a bad weather forecast, they moved all that track activity to today. And it's just action all over this racetrack. That's what I love about this track is is how you know your car might not start out, out good. You might want to take care of some equipment, but then there's somebody else that has a car that takes off good, doesn't want to take care of their equipment. And oh, by the way, the while you're trying to find that rhythm that you spoke of, you know, leading into this show, rhythm is such an important part of this track, and it, you can't find it because the thing's loose. You can't put the throttle down. Now that there's a guy trying to look to my inside, very very difficult to to navigate traffic at. Martinsville. Riding on the 21, the Wood Brothers car. 
for Matt DiBenedetto. Used to be when the Wood Brothers ran a partial schedule, they run all the super speedways, and Martinsville would be the only short track where they would compete before going full time on the circuit. Bubba Wallace inside McDowell now, and Cole Custer trying to capitalize. And Bubba Wallace is one of those that's not in one of the good pit stalls, so everything he can do to gain track position on this first uh, run so that when they make that first pit stop, it helps him not lose too many spots on pit road. And what he did there is capitalized on the guy in front of him getting under him, filling, you know, creating that gap, and you got to be quick to fill it because if you don't, he's going to get down. He's going to try to be blocking. The easiest way to pass is somebody else to make huh? the hole for yeah, you. Especially <laughs> here. Yeah, Alex Bowman, a lap ago, put the uh, front bumper to the back of Eric Jones. Just a little, I'm here, and I'm faster than you, tap. And uh, here's a look. Well, you can see Eric Jones is actually trying to block uh, Alex, he saw where the three car was going to get underneath the six car. That might be his opportunity. So he sort of, you know, hedged to the inside, hoping Alex Bowman would back out of it. But Alex decided to go ahead and take that chance and put that nose in there. How He's, about this view? Whoa. And thank you to Greg Ives, Alec Bowman's crew chief, uh, for working with our Fox folks for that front bumper cam. When, we appreciate it. And we got a great shot of what happens when you clip that curve by the three of Austin Dillon ahead of him, how that car just sent. It sent him up the racetrack a few feet. But I think he was getting crowded, too. You know, goes back to, to both sides of that equation. You know, you're trying to make the pass on the inside, but that guy on the outside, he's not trying to cut you or give you any room to make that pass. He's holding you down, hoping you'll get into that curb. But doing that, you got to be careful at Martinsville. When you hold a car down like that, I think that's what you did back in the day, Jeff. You held me down too much. Darn accidentally, right I every chance allegedly I got. got into you a little bit <laughs> and crashed this once. Huh? Do I have to come over there and separate you? Hey, are we talking about Martinsville or do we need to go to Atlanta? <laughs> See you later, almost already in traffic right here. Well, it's starting to, this is gonna be, this is what separates the men from the boys at a track like this. You've gotta be able to navigate traffic, position yourself to make quick time of them and not be held up and let those guys catch you. Bowman in 17th here, ahead of Dylan and DiBenedetto. You know, and, Bubba Wallace. and doing so right back on the, on the train of that thought, now, if I'm out there and I'm Denny Hamlin, I'm going to be moving my line around a little bit. I'm going to try to enter the corner on the on the end, you know, higher on your entrance, trying to move around, trying to think about what I'm going to do when I catch these guards. Where am I going to catch them? How am I going to pass them? Well, it's about to get busy because Denny Hamlin coming up on uh, a, quite a group of cars. B.J. McLeod, James Davison, Josh Balicki, J.J. Yaley right here. And before he gets to them, let's check with Regan. Well, Mike, the nine car, Chase Elliott, our winner the last time we were at Martinsville Speedway. He just came on the radio and said something I don't know that I've ever heard here. He said his brakes were getting too cold. He was going to turn his fans off. That's 20 laps into a run. Clint, Jeff, I never had that problem. I didn't know how to get off of that brake pedal here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rare here. I think the brake systems have improved and cooling systems have improved so much over the years that I'm not really surprised. And usually when you know that they're cold because they're vibrating, yeah. it's, it's not because they're not working good enough. It's usually some kind of a sensation through the brake pedal. Well, that's exactly right. And it, what I was talking about is navigating around lap traffic. That's what you have to be careful with. Quick time. You saw William Byron have a little bit of trouble there. That enabled Joey Logano to get right on him and put it, get in position to try to make a pass. But going back to those brakes, equally as important to have temperature in them than no temperature. Remember when we said Joey Logano was loose at the beginning of this race? This car and this track is starting to come to Joey Logano because now he's moved himself back into second. You can just see that car looks very stable. Yeah, and so is Martin Truex starting to come to Joey Logano, and we know those two have a history here. And we but we know they both run really good here. But yeah, who doesn't have history here right. at Martinsville? <laughs> 26 laps complete. Competition caution coming at lap 60. And car up toward the wall, turn two, but he's okay. We'll go.
34 green flag laps complete. Denny Hamlin 1.7 seconds up on Joey Logano. Martin Truex and Ryan Blaney. Who's been our biggest mover. Let's have a look at tonight's Blue Emu maximum performance. That would be Daniel Suarez. Who due to a technical violation had to start this race in the rear but he has uh, gained nine positions as has Tyler Reddick at Bristol Suarez led a career high 58 laps and finished fourth. Oh caution, out. caution is out. It is James Davison who earlier this week uh, said he would not be returning to the Indy 500. I think he has seven starts there. Uh, to concentrate on NASCAR this season would not be spending the month of May at Indianapolis. I think I saw a VIR on his trunk lid. That's a Virginia International Raceway. Great road course uh, just to the east of us in Martinsville at Danville. Uh, definitely. I, I don't know a if, little he, help there. Yeah, if he crowded him or got some help, but definitely contact. It's uh, Cody Ware on the inside. Oh boy. Uh, I think that was avoidable. I mean, I understand Kevin Harvick goes by. You're trying to fall back in behind him if you're Anthony Davidson, but uh, I don't know if that contact needed to happen right there. I think there. we need to go to a, go back to some film to see <laughs> the rest of the story there. There was definitely a Paul Harvey to that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first caution of the night comes after 36 laps of racing. They will get a competition caution at. Uh, Lap 60. Anthony Alfredo is the free pass. You know, Mike, I think if you need some work on your race car, obviously you're going to pit here, but we're going to go back racing. We're going to only have about probably less than 20 laps to go with the competition caution. Remember, you can't fuel the car here. All you can do is make adjustments or change tires. I'm not so sure with what give up I've seen that I might not just stay out right here. Well, either <laughs> it's definitely wet down there. These oh, guys are going to have to be careful. I'd maybe pit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's crazy wet down there, Jamie. Well, Chris Gabehart was on the radio with Denny Hamlin saying, I don't know, man, I'm on the fence. And he said, let's just come. And to Regan's point earlier, how the pit crews were still working, they were literally putting the markers down in the box so Denny could see exactly where to stop on his lines. Obviously can't take fuel here, but they're going to take four tires on the 11. Regan? 19 car Martin Truex Jr. on the upper right of the screen. That race car is really tight already through the rubber line. When he puts his right sides in the rubber in the center of the corner, he can't get it to turn like he wants. Ryan Blaney on the 12, his car is chattering the front tires. It's so tight. Joey Logano in the 22 car, the exact opposite. His car is too loose in and free through the center. I believe all of the lead lap cars did make it to pit road. Whoa. What, what I saw was these drivers that came on pit road with hot tires, plenty of grip getting into their pit stalls, but you could see after they put those four fresh Goodyears on, those tires are cold, no grip leaving those pit boxes. All right, you saw the Ram race off pit road, led by Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. First caution of the night.
Ah, kissing the rain goodbye, you would hope. Things are smoking here in Martinsville. A little steam up the tires. Mother Nature is winning. Welcome back to the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500 on FS1. They have pulled the cars down pit road. And the rent flag is out. Gibbs, Penske, Penske, Hendrick in the front four spots. We're ready to resume at 46 laps complete in Martinsville. Green flag. I think you just saw good teamwork right there with Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano letting him in. So what can Elliott do now from third on the outside? Well, and we've actually seen Chase Elliott do a pretty nice job on the outside, has a car that turns really good, sometimes gets that run off the exit of the corner, but Joey Logano's gonna try to keep the pressure on him. Well, the other thing that happens there, your air pressures are down a little bit, it's hard to turn right there. So if you can get to their outside, get to the position on them where you can hold them down, crowd their line a little bit up off the corner, enables them to lift just the slightest little bit and you get to position. And then what you don't want to do if you're Kevin Harvick right here is get stuck in that outside lane. It can be a freight train. You can lose a lot of positions if you stay in that outside lane too long. Yeah, typically what I would think, you know, a lap, lap and a half at most, and you need to be getting down. There he had an opening right there in front of 37 of Ryan Priest. Saw this last night. Denny Hamlin was very, very strong on the front side run, really took off. Joey Logano, you know, was leading the race, was in trouble early. We saw him get loose, having trouble to slip up. Left. Whoa, Kurt Busch goes for a slide, and he's around in turn four. Nobody's collected him, though. Kurt was trying hard to make it work on the outside against Ricky Stenhouse. I did not see any contact between them. He was running 18th and may have just gotten back to the gas too soon there. Let's have a look. See a tire rub right there in front of his left rear. See Maybe some contact from. with Eric Jones, right yeah. Whoops. Yeah, he and Eric Jones made contact. Uh, you know, it looked All to it me. Takes. It well, and, and this goes back to what we were talking about with, with Kevin Harvick. You're racing really hard to keep that guy on the outside. The last thing you want is to let anybody get that position on you. So I don't know if Eric Jones got in there, maybe clipped the curb, but he came up the racetrack, made contact with the left rear, spin Kurt around. Lucky Kurt didn't uh, have contact with any, anybody else. It's been a rough start at Martinsville for Kurt Busch.
Mountain Dew is giving away $1 million to fund outdoor passes and support outdoor organizations. Fans will have the chance to instantly win $25 to fuel their outdoor passion. All you need to do is upload a photo of your outdoor pass or license for your chance to win at DewOutdoorStimulus.com. Working the first caution of the day and the second of the race, entering turn three, Eric Jones inside Kirk Bush. Yeah, and Clint, the more I look at this, I tell you what, Eric Jones didn't come up off the bottom much. It just was two guys racing hard for a position. Kirk probably crowding him just a little bit, trying to you know pinch him down low and get that run off the corner to get the position. Three, 100 percent. Both of them were navigating around, you know, for position. Kurt was crowding him down a little bit, without a doubt. And the 43 got in. He was right up against the curb doing his thing. That's Martinsville racing. You're going to see it again. So here's the choose. Kind of odd, even, odd, even as we go. Jamie, what was Kurt saying about his race car just before that? Well, Mike, about five seconds before he spun, he said, guys, we're on the free side to start. Then he did that nice pirouette, saved it, and said, yeah, we're a little loose. <laughs> okay. Got real loose off the right front of the 43. <laughs> well, he has stayed on the lead lap, but will restart 31st. We're going to listen to T.J. Majors. He's the spotter for Joey Logano in the 22. Rolling off fourth here. And that plays restart. right back into what we were talking about. Definitely a different conversation when you're on your outside trying to navigate around, making that decision, Jeff, like you talked about. Do I stay up here for a lap or two or try to get in line on the bottom and get going? All right, so no competition caution. We're going to try to race to the end of stage one at lap 130. Five away. Ready, green, green, green. Playing to get a good start there inside. It's lined up inside. There you go, door. Pull the 19 bumper. There you go. Go get that nine. Just one inside. Still there. Still there, 19 at your door. Still there. I might have a hole behind the 19 office, too. I'll let you know if we want it. Yeah, he struggles on exit. He needs the racetrack up off on exit. Still there. Patience in the middle here. Pin him down. One back, 24. You're clear low, clear low, clear low, clear low by one. All good. You heard me talk about patience at the start of this race. There, there you go. Perfect example right here. And you heard him say patience. So hard to do. And it starts at lap one when you're just trying to get navigating, navigating through tight traffic, being on the outside, being on the inside, and track position being so important. But all the intel that TJ was giving him right there, right? Talked about holding him down, talked about finding him a hole, knowing that that, uh, that all breeds confidence. Listening to that voice and telling him that he had me feeling he's got his back. I know where you need to be. Watch Kyle Larson, uh, Brad Kozlowski from Kevin Harvick's view. Oops. Now that, that was an example of the two of Keselowski trying to get down in that hole. He actually had to check up a good bit. That's when contact happened with I think Larson. they both hit him. <laughs> yeah. Got three drivers working the outside. You could probably guess who they are. Ryan Newman, Ricky Stenhouse, Corey LaJoy. <laughs> Work it out fast, guys, because I'm telling you, that bottom lane right now, as it gets rubbered up, is definitely going to be the preferred lane for a while. Christopher Bell trying to take 12th away from Ryan Priest on the outside. And this is the point in the run you're watching it. You had that cycle on your tires with the caution coming out. The pressures are up, your grip levels are up. You can definitely tell that they're hunting that bottom and, and you know, that's the fastest way around. Priest trying to hold back Austin, uh, Dylan there. And, and there's a hole behind Dylan for Priest to get in if he hurries, and he's going to make it. That's something, Mike, where it's very dangerous. You're that car on the outside. So easy for that car on the inside to make contact with your left rear tire. Your right front fender, your right front splitter can cut that left rear tire down very easily. Kyle Larson inside of Keselowski. Obviously, Larson, fast race car here because, remember, not long ago, he was on the outside lane. Now he's and, and made a little contact with the two of Keselowski. We know Keselowski is one of the best around this place. Mm -hmm. We've seen him run extremely well and win here. So. Uh, looks like Kyle Larson's on his on the march going forward. And I see him going forward through the middle of the corner. It's really rolling the middle of the corner well. There's a little bit of that contact from when he was trying to get into that hole, but that's not going to hurt him at all. 
Daniel Suarez racing for 19th with Eric Jones. Suarez had to start this race in the back after it was found that his crew chief had added ballast in an unapproved location. So Jose Blasco Figueroa is on the pit box for Daniel uh, for the second race this season. What an awesome job he did last weekend at Bristol on that dirt track. Surprised a lot of people, impressed a lot of people with that race team. Well, Clint, all three of these cars right here need a strong finish here. Not just a run, but a finish here today. J.J. Yaley making a second pit stop. Hood is up on his number 53. Exactly what you saw right there with the 43 and the 10 of Eric Almirola. You run out of real estate. He needed that track to get up. The 43 held him down on the exit, took his momentum. He had to check, got into him at least a little bit, and then got a position. Kevin Harvick with a better drive off than Christopher Bell to get himself back down to the bottom in front of Bell, but now the car washes up just a little bit, and Harvick is minus four positions since the restart. Well, well and Clint, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I mean, we've seen where when the Stuart Haas cars, even when they're really strong, and Kevin Harvick's really strong a mile and a half, and, and Phoenix and other racetracks, they still tend to struggle here. Yeah, um, usually tight. You know, and it tied at that. I used, I talk about the five eighths, the three quarter mark in this racetrack a lot when I was racing in the car. And that's where I see right here, I see Kevin Harvick being tight, having trouble putting the throttle down, pointed straight. Harvick finished 17th here last fall and missed transferring into uh, the championship four despite his nine wins. And here's some of Brad Keselowski's spotter audio. Good analysis from Coleman Presley there. How about the driver who is right in front of him, Kyle Larson? Jamie? Well, last week, Kyle Larson did that wet weather tire test here, and his crew chief, Cliff Daniels, was there. Cliff told me every single lap together that they can get on track is so helpful. Well, so far, it's already paying dividends in this race. They started back in 19, their worst start of the year. They're moved up to seven. It's working so far, Mike. There it is. So you see this battle for the lead with Denny Hamlin heating up with uh, uh, Ryan Blaney right here. What you heard that spotter talking about was this rubber buildup. And I go right back to what I was saying about that 5 8 three-quarter mark. He's having to move out, navigate around till he can get pointed. And you can see that ring on the racetrack. It's really, really black at that 5 8 the three-quarter mark around both ends of this racetrack. When that rubber starts building up right there, you've got to figure out how to get yourself situated and then get, navigate through that without pulling on the wheel. And again, you go back, you know, Denny Hamlin's won quite a few races at this racetrack. He knows his track well. And one of the things he does well is he knows when to be patient, when to move up the racetrack, when to change his line to try to save those tires, or when to move over and let a guy like Ryan Blaney take yeah. the lead. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's letting him, but he's definitely <laughs> going to take it. Yeah, down in turn one, uh, coming out of two, Blaney gave the 11 a little bit of the bumper, just enough. You know, the chrome horn is what we used to call it back when we had chrome bumpers. I think you, you're definitely looking at the tail of two tails right there. You see the 12 car. You can already see getting in the corner. He's free. He's a little bit loose. Denny is exactly opposite of that. Looks to me like he's fighting a tight condition. And I saw Denny right there trying to hold the outside lane. Just make him work those tires just a little bit more. How about this battle? It keeps going back and forth. We saw the five of Kyle Larson let the two of Keselowski go by him. It looked like he was a little bit faster. And now the five goes back in front for seventh place. Alex Bowman in the midst of that also. He has gained five positions since the restart. There's the ally cam from the 48. And back here. Daniel Suarez trying to uh, chase Eric Jones, and now he's to the outside. Tyler Reddick's going to get by. Here comes Al Marola and Kurt Busch, who has surged seven spots since the restart. And Tyler Reddick's another one of those started at the back of the field because of uh, an, an incident through uh, inspection. So between him and that 99, both uh, doing a nice job coming up through the field here. Single file there for the moment. Behind them, Stenhouse and Chastain and LaJoy battle. 
And Bowman completes the pass on Kozlowski. That's eighth place. I think the track is going through a big change right now. I think, you know, now we've got a lot of heat in these tires. Air pressure is built up. Rubber's laying down in the corners, and you're starting to see guys have to move around the racetrack a little bit to, uh, to keep those tires underneath them. So I think you're going to see these guys really start to fall off in lap times. Yeah, and that's the tell-all sign. When you start to see these guys, I mean, Jeff, you've been there a million laps around this place. When that baby gets that ring around there, you've got to figure out how to get through it. Hey, how about this battle with Daniel Suarez trying to hold off a bunch of fellows, all of whom need a good finish here at Martinsville. Jamie. Daniel Suarez worked his way from the back up to 19th. Now he's fading. He's got a vibration. He thinks he has a loose wheel. He's telling the team, be ready. I'm going to bring it to you. It's certainly possible coming off of, you know, those round of pit stops that we saw last night. Uh, we actually heard of, of a couple guys maybe having some potential lug nut issues and things like that. Rolling straight off of that into these screen flag runs. Well, there was the thought, Kurt, that, uh, rather, Clint, that some of the crews Here he comes. were in a hurry to get those uh, wheels and tires on because there was going to be a competition caution in another dozen laps. And they just might not have gotten all five there. <laughs> competition, Mike. You bet. Looking what? at this racetrack, it's rubbering up in a big way. The sun, I can't help but to think how much more, you know, if I'm Larry Mack, how much more that you would have trouble because of the fact that uh, the sun's down on this track, it's hot. The rubber buildup is going to be way more than what we would have had last night. Yeah, I just saw him screwing down on that right rear jack boat like we talked about before the green flag on Daniel Suarez's car, taking wedge out, helping the turn in that car. Daniel Suarez will go at least two laps down with that pit stop. 85 complete, Ryan Blaney in command. Ninety two laps completed Martinsville action everywhere Ryan Blaney leading Denny Hamlin by a second but uh, Kurt Busch has just broken into the top 20 he's trying to get under Bubba Wallace so they have some history because on the pit stop well they had some history and here <laughs> Michael McDowell as Corey LaJoy tries to come down in the corner he was battling a uh, very hard against Ross Chastain and then McDowell got a piece of it action all the way around this half mile track. Well a lot of action right here Mike because if you don't if you look 
not too far behind this group. Absolutely. That leader, Ryan Blaney, is coming. And when that happens, it creates a lot of urgency. All right, here's telemetry on Kevin Harvick on the lower left of your screen. Yeah, I can tell by watching Kevin, and you're going to hear it right here. He's, he's having trouble with the turn in his car. He's tight. He's running a different line than you can see. Can't get down. This is all conducive to being too tight. Yeah, and if, if that car is too tight in the center, that it never cuts to then give you the drive off so that you can get the car pointed straight up off the corner and feed the throttle. And even harder than that, then you're loose off the get off the throttle. Yeah, late, or late off the corner. Yeah, real late once you leave the concrete. Exactly. Well, let's show you throttle brake and steering comparison between Kevin Harvick and our race leader Ryan Blaney. Yeah, so here's some telemetry that's coming straight from the car throttle at the top. So, you know, all the way at the top, that's 100% down where it's flat. That's zero. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeff, look at the steering trace right here. This <laughs> is the one that tells the story right there. Massive difference in the steering and how much input that Kevin Harvick is having to put in leaning on that wheel versus the leader of Ryan Blaney. Both ends of the racetrack, too, showing the same tail right there. Way too tight. Look at this. Look Kurt out. Busch finally got to the inside of Bubba Wallace. Maybe Eric Almirola is going to try to come with him. <laughs> That's five cars under a blanket right there. And yeah, the 43 does not want anything to do with the one car either. He already wrecked him once. I don't want to get somebody else get up here and do it. But but see, to me, this is a, an area where if you're Bubba Wallace, you had the opportunity. The one car ran you down. He's got fresher tires. And, and because he spun and he came and got four tires, let him go. He's run you down. Let him go. Tuck back in behind him. You're going to save more time and probably not get pushed to the outside and lose more spots and more time to that leader. Yeah, and at this point in this run, that's exactly what you have to do. Whatever's going to take the least amount of time in traffic. And the give urgency up on the here is that Ryan Blaney's coming. He just had to fight his way past Corey LaJoy and Ross Chastain, who have now just gone one lap down and battled for the free pass spot right behind the leader. I think there's a lot of block, a lot of mirror driving right there. <laughs> Chase Elliott to the inside of Justin Haley, trying to get past Martin Truex for third. Custer Anthony Alfredo just ahead, one lap down. A little crossover right here, might get a two for one. Yeah, he's got a run on him. No room to the inside. So, Jeff, uh, Clint, do you want the lap cars to stay high or stay low here? I want them to do whatever they're going to need to do to block that car in front of me to give me a run <laughs> yeah. so I can make the pass. <laughs> you know, just stay consistent, and that's, they wouldn't, it, if they weren't fighting some sort of condition, Mike, they wouldn't be a lap car. So if they can keep it on the bottom, keep it on the bottom. If they can keep it on the top, do so. But a lot of times when they give up the bottom to you, if you're tight like Kevin Harvick is, it makes it even more difficult to get around him because you need all that real estate to get off the corner. William Byron inside Joey Logano, sixth place, trying to use that uh, lapped car of J.J. Yaley as a pick. And on fresher tires, Daniel Suarez is in that mix, even though he is two laps down. This is going to open up the door for the 48 car of Alex Bowman. Oh, not quite not quite enough. The 22 is able to get down in that gap. You see, Wallace falls one lap down to uh, Ryan Blaney. Blaney was runner-up in both races at Martinsville last year, uh, despite having pit penalties in both races. And did you see how his car was really hugging that curb well, turning underneath that rubber streak that we were talking about? We've been watching these two cars in front of him, uh, Ricky Stenhouse and Eric Elmarillo. Those guys are having a lot of trouble moving around on this racetrack, doing whatever they can do, because that leader's coming quick. See Alex Bowman there using J.J. Yaley as a nice pick. Make that pass on Joey Logano. I, I, I agree. To me, at this stage in the race, Clint, 
I like to see a car that can just wrap right around that curb. And the curbs change over the years, right? You can't mm -hmm. just run up against it the way you used to. But as more and more rubber gets laid down, if the sun stays on that concrete and more rubber lays down, I do think you're going to have to move up that racetrack to straddle that a bit. Let's check in on the leader with Regan. Well, Mike, I asked crew chief Todd Gordon exactly about that earlier this morning. What makes Ryan Blaney so good at Martinsville? He said exactly what you guys are mentioning, his ability to keep the left sides right on that curb even when the rubber goes down. He's not one of those drivers that moves up and straddles the rubber. He hugs that inside curb, finds that grip, but doesn't hit the curb. He said that's a big difference between them and other cars out here. What's well, one thing to be on it getting in the corner. Even in the apex, the hardest part is to wrap that curb all the way around the corner and still be able to get off the corner with a lot of drive, keeping that left rear on the ground and digging. And that's what I see is so strong about Ryan Blaine in this 12 car. Whoa, Whoa three wide. wide. Eric Galmarola, I'm telling you, this is the urgency. These two guys, you got the 47 of Stenhouse Jr. as well as Amarola, they know that they've got to stay ahead of that leader. They got 20 more laps to do it. Well, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. There's probably going to be some cautions that give you another chance at that, but it makes the rest of your day just very, very hard because you're constantly digging yourself out of a hole. No, that water we that wall of water we hit driving home last night. That was the end of the world. <laughs> What'd you say, Clint? That's that storm had a name? I think yeah. it did. Let's have a look at our Toyota top performers. Here at uh, 112 laps complete of Martinsville, Denny Hamlin second after uh, leading 38 laps. Martin Truex, Christopher Bell in the top 10. Kyle Busch just outside and Bubba Wallace. Look at all that rubber down the racetrack. This is a point in the runs where it's discipline, man. You have to discipline yourself. Start to back the corner up a little bit. You'll see Ryan Blaney right here. Don't just drive it off in there. You saw Ricky Stenhouse actually lock his left front up a little bit right there. Those are the things, the tendencies that are, it's this track just entices you. It drags you in, Jeff, to make those, those mistakes that you know you have to stay disciplined and keep racing this racetrack. Well, yeah, exactly that. What do you do when, when you start getting you know, lap, you start driving into the corner harder, you start being more aggressive, and usually that only makes the, the, the tire wear as well as your speed go down. Every problem worse. Teammates battling for eighth, Larry. Yeah, I just was looking at the top 10. Have you heard, ever heard the phrase, the cream rises to the top? It's three Team Penske drivers, four Hendrick drivers up there, and then essentially all of the Joe Gibbs drivers, they're all up inside the top 10 right now. 15 to go to the end of stage one. Yeah, and Larry, and I wouldn't be surprised if you go back through <laughs> the history of, of March over the last like 20 races. A lot of wins have come from those three organizations. But what a turnaround from the race we did here last June, Jeff. Remember, Truex won the race. The other three Gibbs drivers spent most of the race just trying to barely hang on the, the lead lap. In fact, Denny Hamlin finished 24th. That's where he ran about all race long. That's a benefit of being with a powerhouse and having teammates. You know, hey, they ran pretty well last fall. Let's figure out what they did, maybe show up with that instead of what we tried. Eric Almirola trying very hard to stay on the lead lap right here. Getting the move over flag at start finish. He either wants the caution to come out or he wants to stay ahead of the leader, or Mike, he wants to be the first one. one Never down. understood the move over flag. I get it, buddy, but I got to stay on the lead lot. Take that <laughs> thing and put it somewhere else. Hey, you do have time to win Clint's money at the start of stage two. That will be the end of your chance to enter free. Answer these six questions and grab your share of the guaranteed $10,000 payout today. You said it right there, free. Come get it, ladies and gentlemen. Stage two, it's on the line, $10,000. Let's do it. Pick six. Foxbet.com. Foxbet app. Super six. Hey, Clint, here at Martinsville, a number of years ago, I ran up in a NASCAR hauler complaining to Bill French Jr. about lap traffic after the race. He said, Larry Mack, if we didn't have lap traffic, who would the leader ever pass? <laughs> <laughs> right now, he's trying to pass Eric Almirola. Here with 10 to go in stage one. And if he does get you right here, if you're Eric Almirola, the thing that you have to do is latch onto his back bumper. If he passes somebody, make sure you pass him too. One thing you don't want to do is not be the lucky dog. Well, and also, if you're the leader, 
you want to make sure that you know who you're racing, right? Because there are some that are willing to fight and do about anything to stay on that lead lap at this stage in the race. Eric Almirola is one of those guys. He's going to race you hard, but he's going to race you clean. You were that way, whether you use lap traffic or racing for the lead or third, <laughs> no, fifth. No, that, that was only when I was 50th. racing you. Only when I was Miserable. You. Now, the next two ahead are side by side. A resurgent Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick are the next two ahead of Brian Blaney. There they are. And they're loving what they see with Eric Elmer. They're big, big Eric Elmerola fans right here. Hold him up. Hold him up. We're going to get gone. <laughs> Seven to go. I'll tell you what, Eric Elmerola, nice job right there. Maintained on the outside. Maybe even found a little bit of something out there on that outside lane. You can see he's really, really tight, though. Front end sliding out in the center of the corner. Well, that camp's three got a wide again down the back straight away. Whoa, look out. Just outside the top 10, Christopher Bell in position to get the last stage point. Half a dozen laps from now. Hey guys, Tyler Reddick in that eight car. Jeff, you made mention he had to start this race at the rear of the field. He has made his way up to 12th, and I've watched his lap times three or four out of every five laps. He has been faster than all of the leaders right now. Yeah, Larry, I liked his interview last night, even though we didn't go uh, continue racing last night. We interviewed Tyler Reddick, and he was very complimentary of his race car. He was very optimistic about his chances today. He's proven it right now. And what I saw right there in, in the rear view, you saw his car really hook up. Lucky move up. When he leans on this thing to turn left, look at this straight drive he gets, and he'll drive right to their bumper right there because of that. Baby's turning good in the middle of the corner. Yeah, and that's not just anybody's getting to the bumper of. That's Kyle Busch. Going to be three to go this time. Eric Almirola still just ahead of our leader. Kyle Busch one spot away from a stage point in 11th. Reddick 12th as they lap Chase Briscoe, who is one down. Man, he wanted to look at the yeah, inside, Jeff, and had the opportunity. But you got to remember, this is again goes right back to being smart, being patient, like you said at the top of the show. That's Kyle Busch right there. You put him three wide on a lap, or he's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you got to know who you're racing. Now, if Al Marola can stay out in front of the 12, race leader Ryan Blaney, and then. You get, and you got the 99 of Suarez trying to get one of his laps back. Yep. Great move right there. Fresh time tires. bomb. And got it. So the free pass car would be Ricky Stenhouse as of right now. One this to is go. If, where you, if you're Eric, you got to be really careful. Not let that guy get you out on the outside and let that leader get around you. I think Blaney's going to be nice to him, though. That's exactly what I was talking about right here, but it's out of time. Ryan Blaney, stage one winner from Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson. And I tell you, I don't Maybe he was woke up, Jeff. He didn't Man, sound I, like it, listen, but he was ready. <laughs> He's definitely ready. Brian Blaney gets his second stage win of the season. The stage one winner has gone on to win two of the last four races here.
three Fords, three Toyotas, and four Chevys. Garnered stage points in stage one in the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. Getting ready for pit stops. It'll be the second pit stop of the race and the first of the day for these teams. Let's begin with Jamie. And Kyle Larson missed both of these races in Martinsville last year, but you couldn't tell. He drove his way right up into the top five. A little bit free to start and lacking some drive off. They'll give him an air pressure adjustment to help that. Meanwhile, the 11 of Denny Ham, a little tight in the middle, loose off at times. He's led the most laps, 69 so far today, Regan. Martin Drex Jr. in the 19th car. That race car has too much rear tire wear for him right now, but he needs the front to turn as well. The left side of your screen, the 12th car leader, Ryan Blaney, still room to make that car better. The back of it is dancing around too much on entry. And the ninth car, Chase Elliott, his race car is decent right now. He really likes how the front turn on that car is and how it rolls through the middle of the corner. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Blaney Hamlin Truex, just the way they came in. And Chase Elliott dropping five spots. Kyle Busch picking up four. Let's dial up that stage winner. Brian Blaney, this is the guys up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Hey, yeah, I got you. Well, man, hey, congratulations on that stage win. Uh, you know, we talked to you at the start of this race, and man, I'll tell you what, uh, you guys have got that thing dialed in. How's the track? Is it changing as rubber's laying down, and did you guys make any adjustments there? Yeah, it is changing. Um, you know, it started to kind of clump up there, you know, towards the end of that run. Um, and it was it was pretty tricky how you maneuvered around it. So track definitely did change. It's something you got to notice. And, you know, put in the back of your hand to make changes towards it. We made a small change just to uh, see if we can get a little bit better. But proud of the effort so far, but long race to go. Well, we love the way you're wrapping that thing right around the curb. Keep it up. Have a good race. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. I, I don't know, Jeff. I don't know if he's going to make it. I tell you, he's, he sounds really tired. I guess the green flag wakes him up every time. <laughs>
after Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, and Edge collide in the main event of WrestleMania. Who will prevail as Universal Champion? It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Are you ready? Bit of a Sunday smackdown here at Martinsville Speedway. 139 complete, 361 to go. Ryan Blaney alongside Denny Hamlin for uh, the restart after the choose. At the pace cars, the all new Ford Mustang Mach 1, bringing back a storied name from 1969 and the early 70s to the Mustang lineup. Jeff, I wish they had cool that choose, choose rule when, when we had our. Mix up uh, at yeah. this racetrack. I think I'd have chose a little different <laughs> that thing. Yeah. I don't think the outcome's going to be any different. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Busch's team had the second fast to the stop of the year and moved from 11th to 7th. Chase Elliott lost five spots. They had trouble getting the right front wheel off. We're back under green. Remember, Denny Hamlin's car takes off really strong. Let's see if he does that again on this restart. But I think if I'm Ryan Blaney, don't let that, you know, as long as you can keep everybody else back, let him go. You know you ran him down last time, probably going to do it again. I think that's the thing about patience and what you talk about about this, Jeff, is, you know, watching Ryan Blaney right there, it's very important to make sure that you discipline yourself to have that patience and, and have a car that does take off slow. You know that's going to pay dividends on the back side of that run, but you cannot have it take off so slow that you get yourself in trouble and get mired back in too much traffic. Oh, yeah, and it's Denny Hamlin and, and Chris Gaypart. These guys know how to adjust to this racetrack to get the, the long run speed into that car. You don't necessarily want to give up that that position this early, but sometimes you have to. So what do you do if you're William Byron right here? Do you let the five in or not? Depends on if you want that favor back later in the race, yeah, if you I, need it. I think it depends on what kind of run the five of Kyle Larson gets off the corner too, but right now I'm a little concerned these guys on the outside lane and Larson's one of them and, and his teammate Alex Bowen's behind him. When you run that many laps in that outside lane, you're abusing those tires a good bit can sometimes even change the balance of your race car. You can see that five right there, Kyle Larson loose off the corner right there. Got the 18 of Kyle Busch right up beside him. He's having trouble out there. Yeah, I take this advantage of this opportunity. There's my a teammate, teammate right there. Thank you, thank you. Flipping the peace sign, baby. <laughs> Christopher Bell working the outside. And Austin Dillon inside of the nine, who goes outside of the 20. Wow. Wow. It's That's on. something that Where you don't expect, right? From? I'm going to move to the inside, going to make this pass. Where'd he go? Yeah. Didn't see that coming at all. That was a strong yeah, move see, by I the wanna, nine. I want to see that move again. Here it is. You see that they come off the corner. He's going to block Austin Dillon on the inside, and he goes to the outside. And it looks <laughs> like the 20 of Christopher Bell maybe checked up a little early and allowed him to get to the outside. Fourth place is Kyle Busch. Marches toward the front. That was a great pit stop that they had. Statistically, the fastest pit stop anyone has made all season. Okay, second fastest. <laughs> Take that. See the Denny Hamlin's teammate of Martin Truex. Look at how much he's rolling right there through the corner better than the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Now, it's one thing to have Denny Hamlin get out there in front and, and like set him as, as your, your sort of your rabbit to chase. But if the 19 of, of uh, Truex gets by him, and then you've got the 18 of Kyle Busch coming. That could be trouble. That could spell trouble for the 12 of Brian Blaney. Well, it goes right back into the discipline and patience of what we're talking about. You know, and you, I guarantee you there's communication going on right now about that. You see the left rear of Truex's car right there. Wondering if that's a, a fender rub from damage or fender rub from, from just, uh, you know, being down low on air pressure and things like that. And the 18 is coming. He's quicker than... Blaney and Truex as we watch 15. Kurt Busch, Ryan Newman. Yeah, Kurt Busch, great job recovering from that spin earlier in this race. 
And Sometimes he is up little... five since the last restart again. Jeff, on a track like this, these short tracks, a little bit of adversity always helped me a little bit. As long as it happened early, you know, get that chip on your shoulder. Always helped me in traffic here. You wouldn't mess around <laughs> with anybody from then on. You know, it, it, it was something about that attitude about this place that, that went hand in hand. I can see you excelling with the chip <laughs> on your shoulder. <laughs> Fifth place. Alex Bowman. Teammates. Coming to life here. We saw he's pretty strong at the end of that last run. So, uh, Clint, did the harnesses fit over or under that chip? <laughs> well, I think it just depends on where you're at and who wrecked you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, one thing that I've always found interesting about this place is a lot of times if you look what we have going on right here you see teammates racing teammates organizationally it goes right back to what Larry was teed up you know teed us up with of, of uh, uh, Martin Truex was the only Gibbs car that ran well now you come back here everybody honed in on that setup that he had the success that he had and found that you see that with the Hendrick kid you see it with the Penske boys you see it unfortunately with the Stuart Haas cars right now but man if you stick together and you stay down that path together, you will find success. Well, every organization, right, that's been successful says, hey, guys, let's battle it out among ourselves. Let's share information. Let's make sure our organization's better. Right hey, up until oh, you're the, oh. oh that, that started way back in turn three. Bubba tried to dive bomb to the inside, and there was contact between he and Harvick and Busher. Well, it goes right back to that chip in your shoulder you were asking me about. That yep. guy, he's having trouble with this race car. That's one person I wouldn't want to mess with on this racetrack right now. Here you it can is. see he just couldn't hold it on the bottom, couldn't get in the throttle. That's going to open the door for, I don't know if it opened the door. Man, I don't know. He was uh, he was there, but like I said. Oh, that was, that was, was some That was definitely right retaliation. <laughs> But in my opinion, it goes right back to what you said earlier, Jeff. Know who you're racing and moreover, know what kind of race they're having going on. That's something that a spotter, Freddie Kraft, you probably say, hey, he's not having the best of days. Be careful with him. I'm going to tell you, one guy that was on my list of don't mess with was Kevin Harvick. He and I had very few issues throughout my career. And, you know, for whatever reason, we had we had great respect among one another. But, man, we rarely ever had contact. Boy, that respect's hard to find with you. <laughs> wonder where he got that at. <laughs> Tenth place, Austin Dillon, who uh, shared the booth earlier today with Ryan Blaney and Adam Alexander for the Xfinity race, won by Josh Berry. On Clint. the left, seventh place. Clint, we might need to get some cars, go back out there. Being up in the booth is going to give you this much of an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Austin has, has have always followed his career, you know, starting at RCR and knowing those kids and watching them grow up. I've always kept my eye on Austin and, and uh, the job that he does at this racetrack. This is a hard track to get around, and he's always been pretty sporty here. And it's always been a special track for Richard Childress and his organization. They're just down the road in Welcome, North Carolina. That's why I said yesterday it's a home game for RCR, whereas most of the rest of these teams are headquartered much closer to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Yeah, and when you talk about home, you know, over the years, it was so special to, to look over your shoulder in, in the garage area through practice, Jeff, or something like that, and to see all the crew guys. You know, when I say crew guys, I mean the shop guys that are working in the trenches that don't normally come to the racetrack. They're always up here eating a hot dog and having fun. Speaking of having fun, Denny Hamlin, man, made some adjustments and was able to capitalize on that. We all said to Blaney, you know, the way his car was set up, it would take off slow and really capitalize on that on the backside of a run. But it may be showing that a little bit, but I think the adjustments that the uh, Chris Gabehart and, and company made on that 11 car made a good difference. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's lap traffic, but those last couple laps, Blaney was just, you know, maybe a hundred, couple hundreds, almost a tenth faster at times than Denny Hamlin. Now Chase Elliott beginning to uh, pick up some spots here. Larry told us they had trouble getting the right front off and he lost five spots on his pit stop. But uh, Elliott now moving forward. He is plus three positions since the restart. Going to the inside to make the pass on William Byron. And that will be for ninth place.
And we'll move up to fifth and Alex Bowman. Jamie. Alex Bowman of the 48 has been on the move up 15 positions since the start of the race. This has been a good track for him. Finished sixth year both races last year. Now he was saying he was a little snug through the center and his drive off wasn't as good. So they fixed him up. Track bar air pressure adjustment. And they added one position on that pit stop in the top five now. So Bowman to fourth bringing Larson with him to fifth as they pass Kyle Busch. You know, Jeff, you were talking about lap times, and you're just talking about crumbs. I mean, just a half a tenth is just so minute on, a, on most racetracks. But these short tracks like Martinsville right here, that half a tenth is everything. And honestly, when you're in the seat is a massive difference. You can feel it. It's that just least little bit. We saw it in the wheel with Kevin Harvick, how much more wheel that he had to put in a half a tenth. Not being able to get down the throttle and spinning the tires up off another half a tenth. Maybe you're loose into the corner. There's that half a tenth. If you can possibly get that, which is so hard to do with an adjustment. If you're Larry Mack, man, I'm screaming. I'm complaining, whining, help me fix this race car so I can put the throttle down up off. I can turn in the middle. I don't have to uh, wheel hop getting in with brakes. If I can gain a six inches or a foot on that it. car in front of me, that's all I'm looking for. Yep. Oh, Ryan Priest off the pace. He was in the top uh, dozen, and now that car maybe it dropped a cylinder. Alternator trouble is what we're hearing on Ryan Priest, who had a, a great race going to this point. Denny Hamlin, your race leader. Let's check with Larry. Yeah, Mike, let's uh, look at the subway right combination. Denny Hamlin, Martinsville, but just short tracks in general. He has four wins here at Martinsville. That's the most of all active drivers. He finished second at Martinsville in his rookie season, his second start here in October of 2006. He has a total of 10 career cup short track wins. And by the way, he's making his 550th career cup series start here today at Martinsville. Win number 45, maybe it will come from being the subway right combination, Denny Hamlin and Martinsville. Thanks, Larry. Ryan Blaney closing right in. Now, the last time Blaney caught Hamlin in this race, took him 30 laps to get by. Mike, you talked about Ryan Priest having alternator problems. I go back to last year. Stuart Haas Racing, Clint, you were driving one of those cars. Almost all four of those teams had an alternator issue. There is no track that demands more out of the alternator and the electrical system than this short track at Martinsville. Oh, for sure. And over the years, it's not just the alternators getting hot. You know, I was noticing the right side windows. I remember last year, all of the drivers, we were falling out, man. Very, very hot inside the race car. This, as well. Look at this battle heating up right here. Ryan Blaney has the long run speed, was able to run down Denny Hamlin. See how much Denny wants to fight him right now. And right back, utilizing the very thing that you were talking about earlier in that first run, wrapping that curb, staying low. Staying straight up off the corner. James Davison ahead in the high lane. And Blaney completes the pass. So one of the questions in the win Clint's money game. Will all three manufacturers have three or more cars in the top ten? Well they did in stage one. Not so sure about stage two. Only uh, two Fords in the top 10 right now. 46 complete in stage two, which will take us to lap 260 as we take you, Fox, side by side.
Ryan Blaney, your leader at lap 184. Now, Denny Hamlin has fallen uh, back just a bit. There's a lap car. Anthony Alfredo separating those two. And we listen in to Denny Hamlin and his team as they try to figure out where Blaney right now is better than them. I don't feel like he's out for all of me. I just feel like I'm getting beat on exit now. But tonight, two-thirds, three or four of those sucks. Yeah, I think, well, I think if anything, he's leaving lower and out of the rubber doing it. Yeah, I, I, only thing I would say, it does look like Denny's got a little bit more wheel. You see that left front turning just a little bit further through the center of the corner, but he's absolutely right. Of course, nobody better than to, to judge that than the guy running right behind our leader, Ryan Blaney. But Ryan is just able to, he doesn't do a whole lot through the center of the corner, but he stays lower and straighter and is able to use that throttle just a little bit more than everybody else out there. Right I now. really liked what you said right there, though. Yes, he's wrapping around. You heard his crew chief say he's wrapping around leaving uh, lower than you are. The problem with it is, is exactly what you said. He's leaving without wheel in it. When you leave with your hand full of wheel in it, it wants to unload that left rear tire, make the car loose. You can't put the throttle down and just keeps compiling the problem that you already have. If you can turn and that thing is turning under throttle as well with no wheel in it, keep that left rear down, launches big time off the corner, as you see right there. Now those two under no pressure from Martin Truex, who is 1.6 seconds back, has a couple of lap cars between them. Alex Bowman, though, is closing right up on Truex. Here's some Bowman telemetry. And we talk about mo modulating or tapering off the brake pedal. Watch the brakes and how he modulates it. He just gradually he gets a lot of brake pressure, then gradually, gradually comes out of the brake pedal until it's time to pick up the throttle. That's how you get around this place. But I also like the flip side of that, of what Kyle Larson's doing. If you watch that, you need to be able to get off the brake and your car roll. If you can do that, from my experience on this racetrack, that's what separates the men from the boys, is when you have the ability with your race car to get in there, get off them brakes, and that thing continues to turn left. Kevin Harvick just made a nice move underneath teammate Eric Almarola a lap ago to take that spot as they're battling Bubba Wallace. Uh, that will move Harvick up to 17th, a gain of one since the restart. And I always love following these stories. We saw Amarola battle it out with our leader, trying to stay in the lead lap, and he did just that, and now he finds himself in 18. We'll keep following this battle uh, in, in, in his progress to see can he make something out of it after saving that lap. And that's nine times out of 10 exactly what happens is his, his uh, willingness to get them elbows up and keep Ryan Blaney behind him. Nine times out of 10, and from my experience, this racetrack could end up with a top 10. Regan? Mike, just to add on Kevin Harvick as well, you guys already documented how tight that race car is. To make it even more frustrating, this is a brand new setup for this team since last fall. After the way they were eliminated from the playoffs, crew chief Rodney Childers went to work the entire week before Phoenix building this particular setup. They had high hopes for it. Right now, it's not panning out. Well, and you just have to ask yourself, you know, what besides setup, we know the driver can get it done. And, uh, you know, besides setup, is there something and how that car is built? You know, NASCAR really limits you from all the things you're able to do to your chassis and, and a lot of the components and uh, suspension components to really make changes. So you got to ask yourself, does JGR, does, does you know, um, Penske, does Hendrick, have something that's really worked well for them over the last couple of years on short tracks to have the success they've had. Well, from my you know experience over there, you, we had it. I mean, obviously won this race and Kevin ran well. We all ran in the top 10 and last year we struggled big time on the short tracks. I knew going into this year that Stuart Haas camp had to do something different on the short tracks. You heard Rodney Childers making that effort, but still haven't been able to find it just quite yet. Looking at Austin Dillon, who is eighth, two top tens here with one top five finish. Jamie? Well, I have been keeping my eye on the three of Austin Dillon. He was working his way through the pack, but before the last stop said he was loose all over. And when he came in, they went down on the track bar and took four tires. Talk about a great adjustment. That's exactly what he's needed. He's already up four spots and in the top ten. Moving up to sixth place. Kyle Busch on the outside of Chase Elliott. 
And a lapped car going to the outside. No, the inside. No, the outside. When you heard Where's about he going to go? <laughs> well, we're, Chase Elliott's going to use the 38 of uh, Alfredo as a pick. He's going to make that pass, and he does. You know, you talk about the, the pit stop on the 18 of Kyle Busch. I mean, phenomenal job for that team, and they want to keep doing that, but they've got to also have the car to go along with it. And it just seems like right now that 18 car gains those spots on pit road, maintains at the beginning of a run, but then starts to fade at this stage. But you never know when that can come right back into your wheelhouse. Some cautions start coming down at the end of this race, which we have seen a lot of times that could play right back into your favor. And we listened in on Team 18. There's no right rear. There's nothing to lean against. It's already junk. Hmm. Well, there's that frustration setting in. And, and what he's talking about is that two things. When you're on the right rear getting into the corner, it's very difficult to, in a challenging situation to get around because every time you get in the corner, now you're talking about that modulating the brakes that we were talking about, it's needing to lean on the wheel to turn left to get in the corner. That thing is just barely on the right rear grip's edge, and then it does the same thing on exit on the throttle. Well, we, and we looked at the brake, right, modulating the brake. So as he's tapering out of the brake, it's transferring a little bit of that weight, and it's getting over in the right rear. And if there's nothing to hold that right rear, you're just not going to be able to carry that speed into the center, nor are you going to be able to get on the throttle on the exit. And you heard on the exit, you said it right there, you heard that thing spin. Let's see if you can hear it again right here as he's underneath of him. You can see he jumps to the throttle, the car rotates, but then it got loose. Now he's going to lose another spot here to Austin Dillon putting a good run together. Winningest driver of the last decade, Kyle Busch has just one victory in the last 43 races. Texas in October. Tell you what, that worked well for Austin Dillon. Got an little twofer right there. And a little love tap at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a teammate battle right here. I had me one of these uh, last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How'd that turn out? Well, a little frustrating. Oh, boy. You saw the four car. Of Harvick there, that car really upset getting into the corner under braking as it transferred from the, the pavement onto the concrete. See the line that Eric's running right there. In the last couple of years, it seems like, I don't know if it's the tire, Jeff, or the track aging, what it is, but I was able to find a little bit of uh, grip, a little bit of speed up there running a very, very non-traditional line like Eric's doing right there. Well, and we saw when Amarola was about to go a lap down from the leader, Ryan Blaney, he moved up, and I think he found a little something up there, so he's making it work for him on this run also. Now yeah, there's Blaney scooting away. Uh, from the pack and about to close up on uh, Daniel Suarez who just moved Eric Jones out of the way. I tell you that Ford Mustang is bad fast. It's on a long run. We talked about that front run speed. You gotta navigate that. You gotta gotta massage it a little bit. Hold on to it. Keep those cars behind you. But if you can fend them off on the back side of this run, that Mustang is digging. I always can tell how good a race car is when you go through lap traffic and and you're navigating through them no problem and you're actually putting a gap to second and third place behind you that's how good ryan blaney's car is right now he's building that gap as he catches lap traffic fourth place battle right here fastest car on track the last lap was austin dillon on this lap chase elliott Fifty to go in stage two. We have just passed 200 laps complete in Martinsville.
217 laps complete. Here's where the Coca-Cola family of drivers are in the field. Denny Hamlin has uh, led 103 laps today. He's the runner-up. Austin Dillon moving through the field up to sixth place. Brian Newman holding steady at 15th. Joey Logano backing up. He is loose at 17th. And Daniel Suarez trying to fight his way to the front. He is one lap down. Hey, Austin Dillon is on the move, on the charge. Car's doing what he needs it to do. He's getting through lap traffic. <laughs> I guess it's not lap traffic. He's getting through lap yeah, uh, tra tra traffic, period, man. Yeah, he's, he's making his passes for position. Jamie? behind Austin Dillon and he just said on the radio I don't understand how Austin is running where he is in the rubber and he's so fast all the fast cars are on the curb Clint and Jeff what can you add to that car? what he means by that he's running right in it and I was kind of thinking the same thing and this rubber I mean it's things evolve in this sport and it's very tricky you know you used to Jeff it, it used to build up and cake up like like an inch, inch and a half thick on the racetrack. This, it, it, as it starts to build up, it gets really slick, really slimy feeling. Almost feels like you're on, you know, some sort of a a, a different. It, the, the tire does not want to adhere to it. So what that is is the prize of him running right through that and finding speed, finding grip right in the middle of it. Kurt Busch working hard here, and that Chip Ganassi number one. Now he's got Ross Chastain on the outside of him, two down, and William Byron just ahead. Uh, Bush had little difficulty catching up to Byron, but hasn't been able to get alongside him. Yeah, it's a dogfight right here. This is good old Martinsville racing. Top 10 position at stake here. When as many cars as Kurt Bush has passed today, we know he has a good race car, but how good is it, right? And every time you get to the top 10, it gets harder and harder and harder. So now what they've got to do is maintain this position after the next round of pit stops, and we will find out how good this race car and, and Kurt Busch are in that number one. I can tell you from firsthand experience, right now at this point in the run, none of these cars are handling it. You can see them slipping around, losing the nose, losing the rear on, on, on exit having to figure out what works best for you in the situation that you're fighting with the condition of the racetrack is is the only thing you can do and Clint, we've seen this a couple times out of kyle larson where somebody's come up behind him been a little bit quicker has passed him and then he follows him for a couple laps and starts putting pressure back on them and maybe even using the bumper a little bit as he is right now in austin dillon well sometimes you learn you know you heard brad keselowski asking hey what's austin dillon doing how's he finding that speed man you saw Kyle Larson, he let him get around him, passed him, followed him, and sees what he was doing, put it to good use, and now he's knocking his rear bumper off. Ryan Blaney was about to have company because Daniel Suarez closed right to his bumper, and up comes Ryan Priest and passes the 23 after being side-by-side -side for six laps. Now, Priest had to stop for that alternator to change a battery, and they put new tires on his car. He's trying to get one of his five laps back uh, and had little trouble running down Blaney. Yeah, these tires, they don't really wear out much. I mean, they lay a little bit of rubber down, but boy, they do go away. When that air pressure builds up, temperature builds up, the, the, the balance and the grip level definitely goes away for these guys on older tires. So you're seeing it right there. New tires make a difference. The next car Blaney will catch to put a lap down is his teammate, Joey Logano, who has dropped to 16th after finishing top four in both races here last year. We can just hear how patient you have to be rolling through the center of the corners on older tires. Out of that throttle a very long time. You know, they like to call this the paper clip because of the shape of the track. I always thought of Martinsville as two drag strips connected by two U-turns. Oh, you look See at his left, left rear, rear yeah, tire. Yeah, that say, was cool. Looked like a little wheel hop from that left rear tire on Mark Church Jr. See if it does it again here. Sometimes, sometimes it's just the sidewall yeah, when right the sidewall on the tire the does. Yeah, so that's transitioning from the pavement onto the concrete. There's a little bit of a transition there. That pressure from Alex Bowman to Mark Tricks Jr. is going to 
change positions here as Bowman goes into third. But yeah, that, that I love watching that left rear tire from mm -hmm. that camera angle. But that problem doesn't get any better, Jeff. Then that's why you saw Martin Truex move over, give up that spot because he knew he wasn't going to be able to keep that up. It only is going to just keep compiling worse and worse and worse. Here's Suarez with a dive bomb move to get a lap back. And as Blaney crosses the line, let's crank it up for you. I drove like that before I left. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Copy that. Stick with the home racer. I clear the 20. Back to the motor. I call three wide bottom here. Three wide bottom. Three wide bottom. All run looking inside. Two wide with cold side. Got it clear. clear. All clear. Turn all around. Still there. Whatever you need. Still there. All clear. Way in 12 laps here. They were three wide into the corner right there. Almirola and Bell <laughs> trade a little paint. Ah, eight turned better than four right there. <laughs> he, he got him a picked up a little push right there, and when he picked up the throttle, he said, ah, go for it. Man, just remember how good last night Joey Logano was at the start of this race on the long runs. Boy, it has flipped to the loose side, I believe, here, and now about to go a lap down to his teammate. Well, this is interesting strategically because Blaney has a big lead on Denny Hamlin, three seconds. But that's his teammate just ahead. And there are still. Oh, Cody Ware around and into the wall. Right rear tire down. Well, Joey Logano was happy to see that happen. You can see, it looks like he got into the wall. And I would say that's what led to the. Uh, sure what precipitated that but here's a look they just Ooh, went down you see saw it, pop. it blow. yeah it popped right there and fell in the right rear pretty sure that was low coming down that back straight away well, look that. you can see the damage where he's got into the wall with that right rear I'd say it just eventually cut the right rear tire down the right front's been in the wall a little bit as well timely caution for Chris Busher he will get the free pass on this fourth caution of the race. Time of caution for a lot of cars. There was a lot of teams right there that was very, very nervous with the lap times that Ryan Blaney was putting down. Yeah, and here's going to be the scenario. They have 100 laps on their tires. You have to come to pit road and get four fresh tires here. But if you're like Eric Jones, Stenhouse, Suarez, you're going to do the wave around because all you got to do is hang on for a few laps with those older tires and you'll be back on the lead lap. Jamie Little. And the 48 of Alex Bowman said the right rear felt like it was on top of the racetrack. Greg Ives said we're going to continue with air pressure adjustments we've been making already. It seems to really work for this 48 car. Meanwhile, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, pretty good for 30 laps, and that's when it started to fall off. The Blaney got around him. They made an air pressure adjustment once again here for the 11. Regan. 
Ryan Blaney, your leader, a little frustrated with that caution because his car is so good on the long runs, just now started to lose the back of the race car a little bit. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., they can't lean on the right rear of that race car. It just won't take it when he gets aggressive with it. In the nine car of Chase Elliott, the back of that car is swinging around too much on him. Blaney will win the Ram race off pit road. From Hamlin and Truex. So this changes everything. 242 laps complete in Martinsville. One to go to the restart, 15 to go in stage two. Ryan Blaney out front. Here's what they said. Put your little air to the right, step fire off here, short run. Experiment here for the end of the race. Yeah, perfect timing. Listen, we've seen where the 12 car Ryan Blaney doesn't take off as fast as some others like Denny Hamlin. So, hey, if, if it comes down to a short run like it's going to with this stage end, and it ha that happens at the end of this race, let's, let's change some air pressure. More air pressure will get the car up to speed faster. Yeah, but this little test session, I mean, how many, I wouldn't think that everybody's gonna pit at this stage in, so I wonder how many spots he's gonna lose. That being said, I don't know. As fast as my hot rod is on a long run, I'm still willing to. All right, there were 16 wave arounds, and that puts Jones, Stenhouse, and Suarez back on the lead lap 13 to go in stage two. You'll listen to Chase Elliott spotter Eddie DeHunt. for the lead. 
Well, oh. those air pressures worked for about a half a lap, but Denny Hamlin's car just, he just has the setup of his race car that has better turn at the beginning. Whoa, better contact. Off. The five and the three got together between three and four. Austin Dillon left just enough room for Larson to get underneath and they made contact, but they keep on. And opened up the door for Kurt Busch to come through. Oh, he was definitely under him. Then he got when he got in there, had Wait. to get on the brakes really hard to try to stay off of him, slid up. Car got loose, slid up and got into him. That's exactly what I saw too. I don't think the air pressure is going to be enough for this 12th car in the event that that comes out. And it's turn two and big heavy contact between Ryan Newman and Matt Benedetto. But no caution yet. They're still rolling back there. And these guys are still battling it out. Oh, now, now we're under caution. And I believe Blaney will still maintain the lead. Boy, some pretty good damage here to Benedetto. They were battling for 15th. Uh, by the way, Joey Logano was too fast exiting on that last pit stop, so he had to restart in the rear. Here's what happened uh, going down into turns one and two. Six oh, just Newman got a little got loose, loose, maybe a little wheel hop getting into the corner. Makes a little contact with Amarola until DiBenedetto comes in there and straightens him out. Nothing you can do right there. You're along for the ride. Ryan got loose, under braking, trying to stay off the 10 of Eric Almirola, and then landed right in poor Matty D's lap. Terrible luck he's having oh. to the start of the season. They who had great luck there was those wave around cars. They come get their four tires now. They yes. absolutely stay out at the end of stage two. Yeah, this is going to be really big for those teams. So Bubba Wallace took the wave around to get one lap back and he will get the free pass on this caution to get another one back. So you just you think about this. Right there's a chance if the 12 car Todd Gordon the crew chief there if they pump those air pressures up. Now you got these guys that just got the wave around going to get fresh tires probably going to stay up back on the lead lap. There's no way you can come in. If you're the 12, no, in no, my no. opinion. And look at his teammate, Joey Logano, on pit road right here. This was something that he needed this race to flip, and this was the opportunity to do just that. Flip this race, get this track position back. He's going to pit right here. And when the rest of them come down, I like this. Well, let's recap. Last night, one caution flag. A couple cars got together in the back. Today, on the resumption, just four laps into the race, Eric Jones got together with Kurt Busch. Busch went around. He's passed, I don't know, 176 cars since then. Something like that. Just great bump and bang, bump and run, short track racing. A little casual contact here and there. And maybe a little more than that. <laughs> Brian Blaney won the first stage from Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson. No bruises on that hot ride. She's still pristine. That's the way it's got to look to win this race. Uh, here's what Denny Hamlin had to say when he was racing Blaney for the lead. Crowd me. He's going to get a lever cut. Yeah. I'm not worried about his car. He crowds you. Take care of it. So far, I got it. And that's the risk. That's the risk when you want to race hard for the end of a stage for this point in the race. We're you know, only halfway through this race. A lot of laps still to go. But, you know, you're trying to maintain that position. You are going to crowd that guy on the inside, <laughs> but you're going to take some risks doing it of potentially getting damage to that left rear and even worse, cutting it down. Yeah, I like the crew chief's comment right there. You know, <laughs> that little fuel to the fire. Hey, man, I ain't worried about his car. Do what you got to do. Now, to determine the running order, when the caution waves, we go back to the last scoring loop. And uh, that's how they passed that scoring loop prior to the caution coming out. And Mike, that loop is just there at the exit of turn four, just a little before where that caution came out. Here's some uh, Ryan Blaney team communication. 
you home. Gosh. Shatter everywhere. Copy that. Yeah, turn right into three. Probably would have got dumped. So you heard him say chatter everywhere. So, you know, he just doesn't have the grip. I wonder if the car's on the splitter or something, Clint, where when he's getting in the corner, it, it, it's it's bottoming out and just taking some weight off those tires and, and losing grip. I still think, you know, they made the adjustment of the air pressure, but I still lean back towards air pressure and the ability to take off. So we were supposed to race Saturday. Now we're here on Sunday, Monday, tomorrow on FS1. It's an NL Central battle as the Cubs take on the Brewers beginning at 7 Eastern here on FS1 and on the Fox Sports app. Coming to the choose zone with one to go. Should be just a lot of odd even odd even here. Oh, Bowman down to the inside. We'll switch up there. And Dylan elects the outside rather than filling the gap to the inside of him. When some of this comes down to the way your car's handling on these shorter runs, you know, if you think that your car's rotating good on the outside, you may, may be able to pin somebody down, make one or two positions up with a few laps to go here. We're going back to what we heard with Ryan Blaney saying that he can't take off. This caution right here will help that. The pressures will build back up, temperatures will get in his tires. He should be able to take off a little bit more. It'll be very interesting if he can hold the 11 of Denny Hamlin off for the stage. All right, two lap shootout to end the stage, which Blaney would likely win, but who ends up second? Hamlin or Truex or maybe Elliott? Let's find out. Denny's going to fight back hard with his uh, teammate here, Mark Church Jr. You see Kyle Busch and Keselowski, a little contact a little bit further back. But boy, Denny just did not get the restart that he wanted to get, get that launch. Yeah, definitely spun his tires right there on the initial launch. But he was having to be doing exactly what he was and very aggressive, utilize what his car's doing. Oh, oh he's oh, going to oh. get there, though. I'll tell you what, Hamlin to the inside, and they come to the line. Blaney by half a car length. Hamlin, then Truex. And side by side, Elliott and Bowman for the top five. Keslowski, Byron, Reddick, and the Bush brothers all score stage points. And Denny Hamlin's car takes off on a short he run. He can just be real aggressive. Yes. Yeah. For the third time, Ryan Blaney sweeps the stages.
two stages complete. Larry pointed out to us during the break, the teams have about five green flag laps on these tires, so will they pit or will they stay out? Blaney comes in, Hamlin stays out. Kozlowski stays out, so does William Byron. Jamie. Alex Bowman, they were kind of on the fence. They wanted to stay out, but then they said, come if the leaders come, so they did. He got into the back of the 19 there right at the end, but feels like the damage is minimal. They'll take four tires here for Alex Bowman, who's been good today, Regan. 19 to Ryan Truex Jr. Or Ryan Truex Jr. decided that they wanted to pit right now. They're going to try and keep the right rear from spinning. He's having a lot of trouble with that. The nine car, Chase Elliott, that car started off better this run. Just still slipping the back of the race car a little bit. And Ryan Blaney, your leader, they're going to reset those tires that we heard him talk that experiment about and try to stop the chattering. Now, Austin Dillon had damage uh, coming to the line to end the stage. So he's among those who had to pit. Style up 11 and Denny Hamlin. Hey, Denny Hamlin's Boyer, Gordon, Mike, up in the booth, you got us? What up? <laughs> well, he's having a little trouble with Ryan Blaney. He just fixed that problem, got the clean windshield here. Man, that thing takes off good on a short run. How do you think it's going to do on a long run? What are you, can you do with this clean air to help you with this long run? Uh, hey, I'm just trying to manage it the best I can. I mean, you know, it's, you try to do stuff as a driver to make it better on the long run, but sometimes you're car gives you what you got that's we got a good short run car we got i mean decent long run car we're not dropping like a rock so far so uh just try to take advantage of our strengths well man you're on top good luck we'll be watching <laughs> take another look at the finish to that stage Corey lajoy will get the free pass as ryan blaney and denny hamlin battle to the green and white checkers for stage two Welcome back to the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500 on FS1. Everybody checking in on their favorite driver, fans scanning to hear team communication. I wouldn't have wanted those kids to hear what Austin Dillon had to say after this. Oh, no. What happened there, Clint? I tell you what, in my opinion, you saw the Kurt Busch. He got loose up off the corner. It took uh, Austin Dillon's eye off the ball, so to speak, and he got up too high, got on the wall. I've done that before in the very exact same corner. That's easy to do. All right, not everybody stopped. The first 10 stayed out from Christopher Bell back to Ryan Newman. Those drivers have only two green flag laps on their tires. That includes Joey Logano in the 22. We'll listen to his spotter, TJ Majors, on the restart. It is Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski up front to begin stage three. Here we go. Hey, ready. Have a hole 
off at two. Inside bumper. Clear low if you want it. Clear low, no pressure. He's going to roll the bottom with you and your mirror. You're all good. All clear still. There you go. How no about pressure. Kurt Busch right up in the thick of things and Logano, all those drivers with a few laps on their tires out in front of those who just took tires. Yeah, huge turn of events for all those guys right there. The 22 of Joey Logano got behind on that last uh, adjustment was way down and out. This race flip flop right in his favor, put him right back in the uh, track position game. How about this? A little switch here for position. The 12 car Ryan Blaney's behind Martin Truex Jr. Those are the guys that were on pit road the last time. And we know Blaney's car doesn't necessarily take off on a short run right here. You gotta wow. be careful, discipline yourself, take care of this hot rod, get three, it to the end of this run. Three wide and a bit of contact there between Busher, Larson, and Suarez. You can go around here three wide. Usually it doesn't work out too well. Ooh, yeah, man, that, I tell you what, all three of these guys are lucky. I'm, I'd be worried about left rear tires on the five car, maybe right front on the 17, left, left rear on the 99. 99. <laughs> well, Busher had to send it in. He had Kevin Harvick pushing him all the way into the corner. Here is fifth place Logano, Tyler Reddick to sixth, Eric Jones to seventh. Clint, I like your turn because the lineup here has certainly flip-flopped on this caution. I mean, this isn't the first time we've seen that this year. You know, we, we saw it what, at the road course. We saw it at Las Vegas early in the year. This, as a race fan, is what I love to see. Seventh place. The hardest part about this point in the in the race, too, everybody's had uh, a chance to adjust on their cars. That window of opportunity keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you go on through this race. That makes it a lot harder for Ryan Blaney or any of these guys to get back to where they were in that track position well, game. And one thing else I'll throw in there, this is the first time these guys Turn really four. Oh. Around goes the 77 of Justin Haley, and we'll get a caution. I can't say I'm shocked <laughs> I, I, with all the action that was going on. You could see some guys losing their patience three wide. You knew that this was coming. I, I kind of was expecting it out of those guys that made contact, maybe cutting the tire down. This is the action that you look for in a short track. It just takes one little thing to set this chain of events off. And that was certainly that first caution that came out. Now <laughs> cautions breed caution. Now it, it had the 19 had the 12 past six, seven, eight cars right there, you'd see these guys coming to pit road, but they didn't. Yeah. They did not really make up that much time. But I didn't really look for Ryan Blaney. We've, we've seen how his car takes off on a short run. I didn't look for him to try to push the envelope, just try to find a hole right now, get me 20, 30 laps into this run, and I know I'm gonna be able to stack up against this competition and drive right back up to the front. Seventh caution of the day, Michael McDowell gets the free pass. Uh, only a couple of lead lap cars coming in, both the Roush Fenway cars, Newman and Busher. Yeah, both of them have some damage. Bubba Wallace is in, so is Daniel Suarez, Eric Almarola, and Ricky Stenhouse, and Corey LaJoy. Seventh caution of the day, Justin Haley.
240 laps to go. Time for the Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, Mike, I got my eye on Mark Truex Jr. He's won two of the last three races here at Martinsville. I think as good as he's been today, he might make it three of the last four. Jeff Ryan Blaney won those first two stages. I know strategy's got him back a little bit in the field. Second both races last year. He will not finish second today because he's going to win this thing. Boys, I'm going to his teammate, Joey Logano. Needed a different uh, approach. Over-adjusted on that uh, uh, pit stop. Got behind. Way too loose. Got a new shot in the arm. New life. New track position. Running fifth. Joey Logano's my guy. The 11 team's motto coming into this race. Let's get Denny Hamlin from good to great again at Martinsville. He's led 120 laps and county. He gets his sixth win today. I don't know if he can win it. But Kurt Busch has passed more cars today than are sitting out there in that parking lot. It's been fun to watch. And those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch as we get set to go Green Hamlin against Keslowski on the front row. Boy, Joey Logano outside of William Byron. He's in a tough spot. He's either got to go or get in line if he can. Well, he's going because he's uh, gaining on that 24 car, going to get that position, goes in third. Even though he you know, doesn't have many more laps than these others, it only takes one or two you know, less laps on your tires to have a bit of a gain. And I, I agree with Clint. The 22 car, Logano, is going to be a good you know, judge of, of, of strategy and tires and one to watch here. Well, it fell right in his lap, right? I mean, it was a perfect storm scenario where that caution came out, flip-flopped this race, gave him that track position he needed. You know darn well uh, they made an adjustment to get him back on top of this racetrack and now taking advantage of this track position up front. Tyler Reddick on the outside. Imagine that. Makes the pass and drops in in front of Chase Elliott. So Reddick tonight. Now watch William Byron here in 24. <laughs> he's just trying to roll. He knows he's got the 22 on the outside of him trying to make a pass. He wanted to really let that car roll through the center. But uh, the two of Keselowski was sort of backing up the middle and getting a launch off the corner at the same time. Fifth place, Christopher Bell has gotten inside of the one of Kurt Busch. Yeah, Jeff, I think that was exactly what happened. Is that you're racing your task at hand, and then the two car that wasn't raising anybody made a crossover move, got that straight line off, and it ran right in the back of him. Look at Kurt Busch putting that big block on the 19 Mark Trace Jr. He knows who's got fresher tires, who he's got to keep behind him if he's going to get a, a win or a top five out of this. Teammates second and third, Logano now taken off from Keslowski and in full chase of Denny Hamlin. But but I did see one thing that, that would concern me if I'm Joey Logano is that you saw the back of that car step out sideways once he passed his teammate there. Turn two has brought us under caution once again. That's uh, Cody Ware. Eight cautions today counting the stage breaks. Where has been the cause of three of them? Well, Larry Mack, crew chief, what do we do now? You know what? I, I believe if you're especially one of these drivers that's been up there and you have not pitted these last two, the laps on tires and then cycles hurt them. And I think we're to a point where you're going to see, you're still going to see some guys stay out, but I think you've got to come get some tires right here for the most part. I so, tell you what, though, you did all this stuff and you capitalized on this race flip flop, and you can't give up too much track no, position right here. Yeah, they wanted this thing to go for another 30, 40 oh, laps, absolutely. right? They did absolutely. not want that caution. Absolutely. That's the only thing that would even everything out is if it went a good 20 or 30 laps. So, Larry, every time that tire heats up under competition and then cools down under caution is one heat cycle. How does multiple cycles hurt the tire? Takes grips away, Mike. It almost hardens the tire up, and it looks like to me it's feeding time, boys. They're all coming. <laughs> Jamie? Brad Kozlowski and the two had stayed out on the last cycle. This time, though, he just 
can't get it to stop being loose no matter what they throw at it. He's just loose out there. So they'll try to tighten him up once again here at the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He said, I need more forward drive here. I've been baby in this thing, but if I can get help off the corner, that's my only concern. Four tires here, Regan. Well, the 24 car, William Byron, on the left of your screen there. They've been working to try and make that race car take off better all day long. They're slowly getting there to where they want to be with it. The 20 of Christopher Bell, a good run for him. They took the opportunity to get track position two stops ago. Their only words to him was, don't get any damage during that moment. So staying out were the first six cars. Bubba Wallace, Ryan Newman, Daniel Suarez, Ricky Stenhouse, Chris Buescher, and Eric Almirola. That will be an interesting group when we go back to green, as Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano lead everybody else off pit road. Man, and Blaney, you know, the guy that's been dominating this race, plus three on the pit stop. Thank you, boys. I needed that. Boy, a real loser there on that stop was Christopher Bell slid through his pit box, had to back up, and it just kept going downhill from there in that 20 car. Yes. Custer the free pass on this caution. So we will restart with 25 lead lap cars. So now you've got these guys that are at the top five or six positions kind of doing the same thing that just happened on that last cycle, staying out with a, you know, only a few green flag laps on their tires. Here's Christopher Bell trying to get into a stall. You can have that right rear tire out, but, but no matter what, it's going to slow down the stop a good bit. So, fellas, we're at lap 292, 50 laps ago. Bubba Wallace was two laps down. He stayed out, got the free pass, and made one up, then got himself in position uh, for a wave around. Wave around, then a free pass. And now he's the race leader. That's why I love Martinsville. We all love Martinsville for this exact reason. When the cautions fall in these times like this, man, it just switches everything up, changes who, who the, you know, who's going to be a major factor. And now this is going to change up how you stay patient and stay out of trouble. Well, and the flip side of that, talking about this race flip-flop, and now the three car that we've been talking about so strong had to pit for pitting outside the box, holding him right here. Big penalty for them and his team. That is, uh, to my records here, only the second pit road penalty all day. Joey Legato got caught earlier, too fast exiting pit road. That was way back at lap, uh, or back at lap 240. This one's a costly. Yeah, costly. that's very, very costly. And just, you know, we're, we're going to work on trying to get the video of that, but a lot of times that's either, you know, you slide the nose over the line, maybe maybe the car left the box while somebody still was plugged in with fuel. But the, the biggest the right part side. of that These are, is, this is, is not tightest, correcting it. Right. And it's the tightest, narrowest pit road that we have. Money, money, money. Let's spread some around. Clint stage two contest, $10,000 at stake. 269 winners split $10,000. Heck yeah. Uh, that looks like about what, 40 bucks a piece? Man, I tell you what, our, our, there's no better fans than NASCAR fans. They know our sport and it, it's, it always uh, is fun to watch them take my money, Jeff, I guess. <laughs> I, listen, but it's never a surprise <laughs> that there's so many of them that, that win and capitalize on that stage two contest. But I need a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a lift. You need some fuel money. Yeah, I just had to sell my vehicle <laughs> to pay for that fun stage two contest for you fans. That's how much I love you. <laughs> we'll let uh, Drew Pinaro, our sales guy, give you a little loan to get you to Richmond. How's that? <laughs> Coming right back after him. We got another 10 for him. Fellas, how's this going to play out uh, with I don't six know. drivers with worn tires out in front of those hungry hounds? Possibly a put it out for next <laughs> week. <laughs> there is that chance. Bubba Wallace, Ryan Newman up front. Suarez and Stenhouse, Busher and Almirola, then Hamlin and Logano on fresh tires. Here we go. And we got a really good jump for the outside line. What an interesting choice by Denny Hamlin, right, who has fresh tires to come and take that outside lane on this restart. You think Newman will make it hard on him right here? This will be a <laughs> battle. Oh, he cleared him. Oh, 
little bumper there, Busher to Suarez. Now Marola trying to squeeze it inside. Oh, three wide. Yikes. Woo. You know, and, and it's so frustrating if you're the 11 of Danny Hamlin, knowing we all seen how fast this car is on a short run. Oh. Tra trapped in right here in front of two guys that are beating on each other. That is not a situation you want to be in. Now the tens moved him up the racetrack. This is going to now we're three wide. Oh, push comes to shove here. Well, you got William Byron coming through and your teammate, Martin Trex Jr. Also forcing the issue here. Here comes Bowman as well. Still three wide. And Larson to the inside. Three wide. That's not the first time Larson. <laughs> Still no three one. wide. They're going to make it off Maybe the Maybe four wide. wide. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. This is not going to end well for uh, Somebody. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Stenhouse is still three Ooh. wide. And still door slam in the guy to the inside. Yep. And still bouncing off the wall in the straightaway. That left rear is not uh, going to fix nope. itself. Redick and Kozlowski get passed. Oh, I think that left rear is starting to go here, guys. Little tire rub inside with a nice eight. Sixth place. Hamlin takes it. From Truex. I mean, look at the battle that Amarola has had today to get himself into this position. So you know he's going to fight hard for every one of these positions. And then you see the 12 car, Ryan Blaine, dominated this race up there in clean air, just led the pace, was the fastest car. He's going to need a long run to try to get back to the front of this thing. What a difference! A few cautions make. Bubba Wallace in front of Ryan Newman by one car length. Bubba's a two time truck winner here. First time that he has led at Martinsville in the Cup Series as Hamlin goes for top five on Suarez and gets it. Listen, this is not the first time Bubba Wallace has impressed me here at Martinsville. He's had some good runs when he was, you know, at Petty Motorsports, had some uh, some top 10 finishes here at Martinsville, at least one that I can remember. Yeah, and being able, we talk about track position, clean air, just having that clean windshield in front of you to the run, the whole racetrack, not being mired in traffic where you're always guarded, you know, with a car on the inside or the outside of you, the difference maker, you're seeing it right here in the lap times he's putting down. Boy, Mark Truex Jr. is surprisingly struggling here a little bit on this run. Joey Logano trying to take advantage to the inside. Eighth place. Now Kyle Larson. Three wide behind them as Larson got inside of Keslowski with Tyler Reddick way up on the outside as usual. And Christopher Bell with them. so hard if you're Ryan Blaney you've been dominating this race you know you've got a great race car now you're mired in traffic so hard to not push the issue not try to go three wide when the opportunity comes along and and how you keep from gain, uh, getting damage to your car to make sure that you can find your way back to the front take what? every lap that you, you you need to take but those laps are starting to wind down definitely just that just trying to put myself in his shoes yes you know stay patient all right stick to our strong suit we know this long run could come to us but you said it right there the laps are winding down i can't pass anybody second place byron underneath newman and i'm impressed with the job that suarez has done two weeks in a row trying to hang tough for a top 10 spot Bubba Wallace, most laps he has ever led in a single NASCAR Cup race as he marks 19 out in front here. It takes a good 25, 30 laps, in my opinion, to start feeling the effects of track or, or what your tires go through, throttle down, loose in, tight in the middle, all those situations. I think they start to come into effect about 25, 30 laps in. Denny Hamlin 
Trying to get underneath Ryan Newman for third, but Newman suddenly has some good drive off the corner from the outside. Bubba Wallace now just one car length up on William Byron. Jamie? A little bit of strategy for the 23 to get him out front. This is more laps than he's led all season. 21 and counting, saying that his center is going away right now. He's just not turning as good as he would like. And you guys were talking about him at this track. He's a two-time Truck Series winner, so he certainly knows how to get around and find his way to victory lane. Yeah, he's got a... A rear view full of the 24, which, by the way, we haven't said enough about him. Willie B has been in the run and in the run and run in the top five all day long. No surprise that he's fixing to take a lead here and lead this thing in Martinsville. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he's put together a really strong finish. I think it was what, last year, the year before, he finished really strong here at Martinsville. So, you know, no stranger to, to knowing how to get around this place, but he doesn't have a ton of experience like a lot of the other guys that we talk about, like a Denny Hamlin, like a Mark Truex Jr. So William Byron becomes the fifth different leader today. That old hot rod's got a lot of experience leading laps here. <laughs> and Ryan Blaney reporting that his temps are way hot in the number 12. Well, and, and I was going to say, that's the first time, right, that he's been in traffic. And, Heavy and traffic. when you're in traffic like this, Everything changes. Yeah, maybe this is not a big aerodynamic track, but there's still air that has to go in the opening to cool the engine, to cool the brakes. None of that's happening right now. How about the, the battle that these guys are giving Denny Hamlin back here for second and third position? That's a great point. You know, talking about Ryan Blaney, being back here in traffic, it's not just the temperatures of the engine, it's the brakes and things like that. And that was what was affording him that long run speed. It's gonna have to be careful, discipline yourself, make sure that you keep doing the things that you're doing, not holding the brakes down, utilizing, you know, the, the temperature and everything in your, your, your wheels. That all equals grip on that long run. Eric Almarola has pitted, he has a tire rub. They've uh, replaced the tire, cleared the fender, and Almirola comes back on track, but he will fall off the lead lap. Well, are any of us surprised? I'm just surprised there aren't more guys that had to come down pit road, all the slamming and banging that was going on. Watch the one of Kurt Busch here. Try to move past uh, James Davison. Whoa, Ooh, they just have really clipped back. him a yeah. little bit. Well, remember, we saw him get loose off that corner earlier uh, That when Austin Dillon got in the wall. And uh, Brad Kozlowski was right in the middle of that one, Jamie. Yeah, Brad Kozlowski has been pretty decent today, but he's been struggling with power steering. It seems to be working intermittently. So when he's up to speed like this, it's fine. But low RPM, it goes away, and that's hindering him when he comes down pit road to get in his box. He loses some spots. Turn we have two. Caution, guys. We have a spinner. Oh, boy. Kyle had just said on the radio, I think something broke, and then he went around in turn two. What do they say? It broke traction. Yeah, I tell you what, he did a good job of slowing up that leader, William Byron, and making sure he stayed in front of him and on the lead lap. Yeah, he's he's up high. He knows something's going on. I mean, all the tires look like they're up. It seemed like it was brake related or something. It just didn't slow down much at all. He was way up out of the groove as well. Too much speed, too high, and came around on him. He was trying to pass Matt Benedetto, who is to get into the free pass position when he spun. Or excuse me, no, Bush was on the lead lap. Benedetto was one lap down and is the free pass car. Kyle Bush stays on the lead lap and said this. It doesn't feel like a locker's broken or anything, does it? I don't know. It just goes down in the corner and it feels like the right rear is a pogo stick, except it's pulled down four inches to the ground. Wow, like a like a shock or something, or a spring collapsed, or or it have to be a has failed a shock of something collapsed. I would think. All right, pit road's open, Jamie. Kyle Larson's been on both ends of it today. Was free early on, tighten up the end of that last stage. It'll be four tires here. The 23 
Bubba Wallace, we just talked about him. He's just losing the center. Wants that car to turn and rotate a little bit better. And Denny Hamlin, the team owner for Bubba Wallace, a four-tire stop here, Regan. The six of Ryan Newman, a great recovery after a spin earlier. That car's been loose all day. They finally got it to where now he's tightened up. Now he needs a little bit of center turn with it. And the 24 of your leader, William Byron, that race car is pretty good right now. He has been all quiet. They're just managing the race. Hamlin, first off pit road ahead of Byron. Bowman up two, Wallace down four. Under caution with 177 to go for Kyle Busch's spin. How did Denny Hamlin get the lead on pit road? Well, he was almost a second quicker than William Byron. His crew, eight tenths of a second faster. So Hamlin will be the control car on this restart with Byron on the outside. De Benedetto, the free pass car, 25 lead lap cars, 174 laps to go. We talk about the 12 car Ryan Blaney not being very good to take off. The one car that I have seen that could keep up with the 11 on these short runs, he's in second right now in that 24 car William Byron. This is a better start, you know, certainly better track position for Ryan Blaney, but he seems like he's stacking up against those guys, holding strong on the outside. Turn two, two cars around. Anthony Alfredo, uh, there was contact there. And that'll be the 10th caution of the race, the ninth today. Justin Haley either was involved or just squeaked by. We'll have a look here. 
Looks like Alfredo made a little contact with the 10 of Amarola, and then that, he tried to stay uh, from contact with uh, Amarola, but then that just turned him around. Haley nowhere to go. That should put Chase Briscoe back on the lead lap as the free pass car. Haley was uh, two laps down at the time. So now 170 laps to go and everybody was just in for fuel and tires. So like these folks, we'll take a quick break from Martinsville. Yes. It's a beautiful spring Sunday in South Central Virginia in Martinsville. Uh, the sun is out, the pollen is pervasive, the flowers are in bloom. Beautiful day. Now, not quite so much for Austin Dillon and his crew. Let's go back. Uh, Larry, and look at the penalty on Dylan here. Yeah, the pit stop was actually made in the box. You see he leaves, but they didn't make the adjustment they wanted. The crew member sticks the wrench in the left rear, makes the adjustment. That is truly pitting outside the box. But Larry, you could you could tell that somebody told Austin Dillon stop, and he stopped, but the nose was over the line, and, and then you see the guy, the crew member look back, oh, okay, yeah. I need to do the adjustment, but they forgot to tell Austin Dillon to back back up into the box. Yeah, once you yeah, make that adjustment, once they stick that no wrench return. in there, that's it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's pitting out the box. All right, Denny Hamlin, who got his first grandfather clock on his sixth start here, opposite William Byron, who's making his seventh Martinsville start. Got it Tick -tock. on the sixth start. It's been six years since he's got it done, and it might happen today. So in this Sunday doubleheader, during the Xfinity Series race earlier, won by Josh Berry with a great drive, Denny Hamlin spent the whole race on the pit box and then quizzed a whole bunch of drivers afterwards on what he could expect from this race surface once they got going. So Hamlin did his homework and did it well. He's out in front of William Byron, Alex Bowman, Ryan Newman, and Joey Logano battle here for fourth. 
Well, and he knows how to win here, right? We know that he's had five wins here in the past, but he also, you know, knows that that car was pretty good last night. So he did a little extra homework today to try to seal the deal here today. Regan? Well, just update the 12 of Ryan Blaney right now. Those temperatures that were really high earlier, they're slowly starting to come back down for him as he works his way back towards the front of the pack. And Kyle Busch, we saw him go around a few moments ago, thought he had something broke. The team checked everything on that race car, couldn't find anything. Wow. Second place heating up. Well, we talked about William Byron's car seems to be very good on the short runs. We didn't but, talk about the 48. But Alex TV. Bowman Turn has two, a around goes car. Keslowski off the front bumper of Daniel Suarez. Oh boy. Martinsville's starting to happen, Jeff. <laughs> We've seen this before. Live this nightmare. You start having cautions within 200 laps to go. And uh, you're right, this thing becomes a monster. Here's a look at it, fellas. You can see Daniel just gets in there Seems a little loose. bit hot and high and loose. Yep. It's exactly how I saw it. He's racing hard in there, got loose underneath of him, got into Brad and turned him around. Cole Custer had to climb the curb to get away from Suarez to the inside. It's definitely not at the point in the race where you need this to happen. If you're Brad Keselowski, you are sick to your stomach right now. You see Matt DiBenedetto get by. We're going to ride with him and show you the view from the Ford Performance Cam. Did a good job. You heard him downshift. A lot of times you can't get these things woed up. The only thing you can do there to help yourself is to downshift, grab third gear. You heard him do that. May have kept him out of uh, harm's way right there. Suarez now 17th, while Keslowski trying to uh, run his string of top 10 finishes here to 11 in a row. Reddick on pit road, Kozlowski, of course, uh, De Benedetto, and more. We got a long way to go for next week's race, all the way up toward the top and the east side of Virginia, south side, if you will. Next week, we head east through the Virginia Hills to Richmond, which boasts rich American history, colorful culture, and of course, America's premier short track. Let's find out what memorable moment is waiting for us this year. Tony Stewart wins at Richmond. Oh, no, no, no. Starting with race day at 1.30 Eastern. Man, I'm sure glad that last moment happened, Jeff. You know what happened after that? <laughs> Tell me. I won. Oh, of course. Yes, I knew, I knew thanks, you would Kyle. bring it up for no reason. It was one of those deals. You're running third. You're like, come on, baby. Do it. Do it. Do it. And you're like, oh, my God. He did it. <laughs> Look at this. So Brad keselowski has been talking about power steering issues. It was grabbing. It was working. Then it wasn't working. I couldn't imagine on a track like this. That is definitely not a problem that you need. So they're addressing it right here. Put some fluid in it trying to get back out uh, unless Clint, that was what the they, second what bottle. they did Jeff and Clint I think they felt like the fluid had gotten too hot they actually siphoned all the old fluid out and put new fluid in a little cooler power steering fluid oh, yeah I mean it, it, it could act similar to brake fluid right if it boils if it gets really hot that you know it, it also could maybe have something to do with some some of the pumps and the way that the, the they're doing the pulleys mm -hmm. on the front of that engine well, for this weekend. Under hood temperatures, we've already seen alternator issues with, uh, today. We saw power steering issues here with Brad. But here, when you talked, I heard you at the top of this race talking about rhythm and this being a rhythmic racetrack. No power steering and that power steering, moreover, grabbing at times and not working. No dice at this track. Well, let's talk uh, numbers for a second here. First, second, third, the 11, the 48, the 24. Those three car numbers have a combined 34 victories here at Martinsville. That is one out of every four races at Martinsville, either the 11, the 48, or the 24. Not, not these particular cars or drivers, 
But those one of those three numbers has gone to victory lane one out of every four races here since this track opened in 1947. The sad part is is it wasn't like he stole our stat guy. Either, Jeff. <laughs> he, he actually knew that I, folks at home. I'm sorry. That, you're going to have to rely on Mike Joy just the way we do for those stats. <laughs> uh, well, one thing I can relate to that 24 car right now, William Byron, is uh, I ran plenty of laps around this racetrack chasing that 11 and that 48. I'll fess up, guys. That was all Jimmy Hicks <laughs> uh, on the stat machine right there. Jeff, if you're him, though, if you're William Byron, you're, you're running third right here. What are you going to do inside this race car, especially on this run, right? Are you going to try to capitalize on him as fast as you can, make some hay right here and get to that clean air and run? Or are you going to try to wear him out and run him down on the long run? I just, I, I'm not so sure, and maybe Rudy Fugel, the crew chief for, for William Byron's, made some adjustments for the long run, but his car just seems to me to have short run speed. So I think what he wants to do is get control of this race get out front and try to hold those guys off still going to be a tough task otherwise if you don't if you're not able to make a pass there early on then it's about conserving those tires and brakes Larry 154 laps to go are you done pitting if this thing stays green no Mike it's it's going to be close that that bunch had just pitted right there like Tyler Reddick like Matt DiBenedetto I think they're close enough they can make it but all the others they're going to have to stop at least one more time we're getting now to where a lot of teams only has they only have two sets of tires left in the pits okay Ross Chastain the free pass on that caution was we're set to go back to green Another car that this cycle will help is that 12 of Ryan Blaney starting to march getting closer back to the front where he's been running this whole race. Now he had that cycle in his tires doesn't have to worry about that low air pressure and being loose. Oh or Blaney not. just got into Logano. Oh and around goes Ryan Newman. Oh man he was. He was putting a, a great race together after yeah, having some troubles earlier. And, and actually, it was stacked up because of what we saw with Ryan Blaney and his teammate Joey Logano getting together. It all started stacking up accordion behind him, and around uh, goes Ryan Newman here. Newman was seventh. That car's been through a battle. It looks like a Martinsville <laughs> car or a Bristol dirt track car. So first, let's go back and look at the two Penske cars. Uh, just. You see Ryan sliding in there loose like he's been stacks up behind him. You see Newman get in the back of Martin and then they got in the back of him, turned him around. Yeah, that's a little no harm, no foul there with the ooh, I don't oh. know about that part, though, <laughs> with the Penske you were saying. guys. And here's what happens to Newman on the inside. Did he have some contact from Christopher Bell? Well, it was actually the uh, 23 of, oh. of uh, Bubba Wallace, but it was a oh, the tens really did you see the 10 card? That was really a lot of damage on the back of him. Just is stacking up. And Ooh. it all started with that 12 and the 22 getting together. Man, steer clear of this thing. Man, those guys are taking a beating this year. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, Wouldn't Eric Almirola's season. My goodness. That's a shame. Those guys work hard. They'll get it turned around. I'm always the first one to say you make your own luck. But I got to say Eric Almirola has, has, has done some great driving this year, and uh, no fault of his own most of the time. Things like this is what have. Well, really he did a good job year. of holding on to the lead lap, and then the race flip flopped. He got a lap down right there, and then it just all unraveled from there. But look at that one top 12 finish this year. Uh, we'll replay it for you. And he gets into Daniel Suarez. You'll see it on the far right of the screen. Right about now. Yeah, but you can see everybody into the back of one another. Once everybody starts stacking up there, it's hard to get slowed down enough. And and you might have had somebody behind you that, that you're slowing down and they're not slowing yeah. down and pushing you into that wreck. All a product of a restart. You know, everybody's on top of one another, side by side with one another. Let's use our uh, Hunt Brothers pizza cam to show you Kevin Harvick's view of all this.
but you, you nailed it, Clint. As soon as the, those two Penske drivers made a little bit of contact, everybody just hesitated before they got back to the throttle, and that was just a domino effect back to Ryan Newman. So uh, any hurt feelings from that brief contact? What happened? He didn't get lit? Did he drive it? Or what was it? Yeah, he got in there hot. They're running a little hot all day. Yes, me. <laughs> okay, well. You're right. He's been leading most of the race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, it's time, man. 150 to go, 148 to go right now. Everybody's pushing hard. Well, and you got, you know, th this right here, too, got to be a little frustrating for Ryan Blaney, right? He was dominating this race. They had this thing kind of under control, and then a couple of those cautions, and he's been playing catch up ever since, and that's going to increase not just your frustration, but your urgency to try to get those spots back. The other hard thing about that situation, if you're Ryan Blaney, is that's your teammate. You know, you race your teammates different than you can say all you want. He didn't mean to slip up and get into him, and, and you've been there, Jeff. You have to, you, you, you're forced, right? by respect to race your teammates differently than you would uh, somebody else. If I was another competitor, you probably would have made a quicker time with them, maybe move them in a, a different situation than you would your teammate and not find yourself on the inside trying to dive bomb in there, getting loose and getting into them accidentally. Uh, well, no, now no consider Joey Logano. I mean, he started this race on the front row, thought he had a winning piece. Uh, he's been mired in mid-pack for a good part of the day, finally fought his way up toward the front. And then uh, here comes his teammate. So make no mistake about it, though. I picked Joey Logano. I stuck with him because you a benefactor factor of this flip flop race that we're seeing right now. I still think uh, Joey Logano can get the job done. Wait a minute. Two commercial breaks. You completely changed your I mind. Know. Hey, man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Clint, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first time you ever met me. <laughs> oh, that says it all right there. That <laughs> is true. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Anthony Alfredo gets the free pass, so we will restart with 27 lead lap cars. Uh, Keslowski, uh, one lap down, the only car one lap down. Haley Almarola, two laps down. Priest on a lap by himself, three back. Quinn Hauf and Josh Balicki, four down. Davison, six. Yaley, seven. Ware, eight. And BJ McLeod, 21 down. All 37 starters still running. And we will restart with 1.45 to go. Hamlin and Alex Bowman on the front row. Denny did a great job, in my opinion, of slowing him ja down, Jeff, and it looked to me like still took off in second gear. A lot of times with the momentum, especially with this, you know, the, the, as things have evolved, you've took off in third gear. I think he had him slowed down enough, got a huge jump on him right there. Great job by him. Yeah, most of the time at Martinsville, you leave real early in the, the restart box. He waited real late. Ryan Newman made repairs and is still on the lead lap as you've got Logano on the outside of Byron for third. When I think this is very similar to what got Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney into a similar situation where they made contact is the 22 is on the outside trying to make this pass potentially yep. on William Byron and then that's oh. when oh Kyle Busch loose. just muscled his way past Eric Jones and Kevin Harvick and didn't make any friends doing it up there in turn three. Now, but going back to what you were saying, Jeff, I mean, holding tough on that outside, and it actually finally worked. He wore the 24 down right there, was able to hold him down enough to finally the 24 slipped up, and he got the position on him. Yeah, but the 22 got loose right there. I'm telling you, he, that rear of that car just shears off in the middle of the corner. He just has to be a little more patient with how much speed he carries to the center. And if you're Ryan Blaney, you're happy to see that, even if it is your teammate. Christopher Bell in ninth sent it in hard in turn one. The car washed way up the racetrack, but he gathered it back in. Still right with these leaders. See, Ryan Blaney's still loose as well. Just like you said about his teammate, those Pinsky cars seem to be pretty free. You know that's why they're good long, long into a run, but you got to get there first. You know what I'm just noticing now, Clint? That sun is setting, mm -hmm. right? We've got shade down in turns one and two. Turn four started to become shaded. That track temp is dropping, and the balance of your race car is going to change. And probably, you know, 
them having the benefactor of being able to be loose and that playing into their hand long into a run, that goes away a little bit as the sun goes down like this. Track temps have dropped 15 degrees since we restarted this race at 4 p.m. Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 48 having one of the best runs of the year. But just now he said, I've got a vibration and it's bad in the corners. I'm not sure if it's the right rear or what. They're keeping an eye on it. They may have to come in. If it's in the corner, it's probably a loose wheel and it's probably going to get worse. What happens there, guys, is it starts to get, as it gets worse, all right, so what do you mean it gets worse? It'll get so bad on a short track like this that it'll actually shake the car loose, and that's when it just, you got to pit and have trouble. It, you can see it's it, yeah. loose. And he's losing positions. Yep. I, I would not be surprised if it is getting looser and looser on Alex Bowman. We, we might see him get to pit road here. Kurt Busch is in. Uh, there was smoke coming from that car. We're going to jack up and put right side tires on his number one. And he'll go a couple laps down. Right rear tire rub for Kurt Busch. Boy, Denny Guys, Hamlin has taken off, hasn't he? I'm surprised we've not had more loose wheels. We've been watching a lot of these pit stops and a lot of these crews to make up time. They have been going with just four lug nuts per wheel. Well, there'll be a lot of fines. <laughs> at the end of the race. Lugnut police shows up at the end. Ooh, Alex Bowman had a bad corner and lost a bunch of spots right there in turn two. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, I, I, you know, the only other vibration would be maybe brakes, but I don't think that's the issue. I think he's going to have to get to pit road here pretty soon. You see him move down right there. He's, he's in trouble. Jamie? That's exactly what happened, Mike. He's trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack so he can come in and pit because it's not getting any better. So Bowman will fall off the lead lap with this pit stop under green. That's such a gut-wrenching feeling, and you're trying to hold on to the thing. You don't want to pit. You don't even want to radio into those guys and tell them you got a loose wheel. That's definitely going to ruin their day. And it's such a strong run. I'll tell you what, Martin Truex Jr., you know, we saw he's had a solid day. I, I certainly picked him as one of the guys that could win this race. But uh, right now, we've just not seen much out of him. Has the track changed? And it's taken, you know, some of what he had that was working well for him away. And you just saw Chase Elliott go by him starting to come to life. Kyle Busch and Randy LeJoy, uh, rather Corey LeJoy, 10th <laughs> and 11th. How about Corey LaJoy in yep. 11th spot? That's awesome. Worked hard to get in the free pass position. Took a wave around, then got the free pass back at the end of stage two. And, and then also give the 18 to Kyle Busch some, some credit. He's been muscling his way back up after having some of his issues. Spinner turn two. That's Eric Jones. And that's caution flag number 13. Larry, we pitting? What are we doing here? Now I'm nervous. <laughs> no, you don't need to be nervous. You need to just get it in here, get it to your stop sign, because now we're going to get four fresh tires. This can get us to the end. This will put Brad Keselowski back on the lead lap with the free pass. Well, Brad's getting a lot oh, of help right man. there. 42. Ross Chastain. <laughs> man. Now, I don't know if the two saw something going on ahead of him, was trying to check up, but boy, old Ross Chastain didn't see anything. Well, it's hard to slow down when your tires are off the ground. <laughs> Man, he was going for a ride. So, if you're scoring at home, that's 42 into the two, into the 43, <laughs> and around. Where's the math on that, Mike? Yep. And here's the displeasure yeah. Yeah, that was... of Brad Keselowski towards Ross Chastain. That's pretty bad. Alex Bowman had a loose right front wheel. That's why he made that pit stop. I'm sure you're wondering about the most cautions ever in a final stage at Martinsville. That was nine in April of 2017. We've had seven in the final stage so far today. We are not trying for the record. <laughs> no. Jamie. Denny Hamlin decided to come on down. They fired off a little bit free on this run. They've been making air pressure adjustments and wedge adjustments to help that 11, but he's been pretty stout. Regan? 
The 12 car, Ryan Blaney, really complimentary of his car right here, said it's the best balance that he's had all day long. That car continues to come to them as you see him hit his pit stall right now. The nine car, Chase Elliott, they're finally getting the exit of that race car good. He's also happy with his car. First time that he's been happy with it all day long. And the 22 car, Joey Logano, that race car has been super loose the entire race. He finally just told him it's tight now. Well, tight was the end of the front straightaway on pit road. They were three wide, and and somebody's ripped the nose off Corey LaJoy's car in all that. Oh, no. Might have been Tyler Reddick. There's, here comes LaJoy. What a oh. mess that is. What a shame. He was putting such a great race together. Oh. We talk about how tight pit road is here. Oh, man, it ripped and the whole front. That's how quick things can go wrong. It knocked the radiator out of it. So Christopher Bell is the leader and didn't Ross Chastain just help bring out that last caution. Well he's in second place. Daniel Suarez is third Denny Hamlin fourth. Logano Elliott Blaney Larson Truex Byron the top ten. Corey LaJoy has made repairs. Boy that thing's really ugly now but it's back out there. And we're ready to restart. It'll be one hundred twenty three to go. Seeing LaJoy's car pushed to the garage. What a shame. Looked like he was set for a promising finish. Way up high goes second place Ross Chastain, and here they all come. How many times have we seen three wide here today at Martinsville? You're still seeing it. But Joey Logano was badly wanting to get to the inside of that 11. Denny Hamlin, while he was on the outside lane, not able to do it, though. He better move the 99 to get it. Do exactly that. Put his teammate in a bad situation. Man, Blaney, Blaney needs to comes get out down. of nowhere on the outside for third. Well, I knew he had, to make, he, he, he had to make quick time of uh, uh, Suarez right there in that 99 because I knew exactly what the 22 needed to do, and he did it. He moved the 99 right up in front of him. Oh, and now he moved his teammate. And they are three wide behind them. Harvick under Byron and Chastain. These what guys, a log jam. These guys have been three wide back here for the entire last lap. These guys are going at it right here. Well, just remember, Blaney knows his car does not take off 
very good. It's a long run car, so he's got to hold these guys off. Got to battle even with his teammate to try to hold him back. And look who's coming into the picture now. Chase Elliott, who won this race the last time we were here. And nobody is giving an inch. Denny Hamlin's up front trying to get by his teammate Christopher Bell for the lead and set sail. And Bell gives him some room. Whoa. Car in the wall in two. That would be Suarez. Bounces off the wall, but we stay green. Hamlin. When, and, and that's the tricky part when you stay out and you're on older tires. You know, everybody just starts using you up like a pinball. Here's what happened to Suarez with William Byron right behind oh. him. <laughs> shot, fired. Yeah, it definitely shot. And I tell you, the shot that I saw right there is the 14. Johnny Klausmeyer, I was watching those guys. He took advantage of a wave around, put his driver, Chase Briscoe, in a position. He gets in track position, and man, right back in the top 10, finally seeing that 14 and the potential there. And look at his teammate, the four, Kevin Harvick, coming into the picture into the top 10. Man, I, I would have wrote both of these guys off earlier in this race. Again, took advantage of the wave around. We talked about the way there was the race flipped around. Um, you know, Johnny took that wave around attempt. And the, his driver was able oh, to Oh, uh, back straight away. Oh, big It's clawed, oh. completely backed up. And it started with Kyle Busch sideways with another car blocking the entire back straightaway. Oh, I see Alex Bowman in that. Reese on Bobby fire. Bush is in it. Alex Bowman, what a difference a caution can make Kislowski. for all these teams. I mean, the backstretch was Parking completely lot. blocked. Oh, Ryan Priest, all torn up. Justin Haley. So that started back in turns one and two. And in fact, let's go all the way back to the start finish line and Kyle Bush. He comes into frame. Yeah, you can see he's trying to go to the, to the inside of the 17 of Chris Buescher. They make contact. Boy, Buescher gets loose and comes down. I don't know if he intentionally tried to come down because he was upset. But boy, look at that parking lot after that. Brad in that one again. It'd be easier to tell you who wasn't yeah. involved. Get it here as soon as he got. Oh man, big shot right there. Kislowski Everybody's just him. being shoved right into this melee. Let's watch Chris Busher. He gets well, loose. Well, they got loose, and, and yeah. Then, and then I just think, I think he's mad. You know, at this stage in the race, you get angry when something like that happens. But that's why you got to keep your composure. I, I don't know that that was intentional, but it just seemed to me like he could have prevented from getting into the outside of the 18. You see the radiators knocked out of the 48. Man, unfortunate for them. They were strong all day long. In position, no longer. You know, you heard, I talked about Matty D doing that earlier, downshifting in a third to try to get that thing woed up. It almost woed it up too much right there. Well, I think he McDowell got McDowell got into it yeah. hard. McDowell got right mm -hmm. into the rear bumper of him as soon as he downshifted. I think that's going to end Brad's day. Several of them. That's where that's that how fire. fast things happen and stack up. Yeah, that's short where that track fire came from, from Priest, because probably uh, oh. a little displeasure from Daniel Suarez towards, I believe, William Byron. Well, that came from the help that he got <laughs> getting into the turn two wall earlier. Yes. Uh, my unofficial fire, tally boys. has 15 cars involved in that backstretch pileup. Should have used the water on his hot rod. <laughs> Wow, Martinsville, baby. It's been a wild one. Here's some Kyle Busch audio. Did he just shot back down across me and like spin me out? What the 
He got free up top, and then he throttled back up, and I think it spit the back again. Doesn't that normally make your to the right? I think Kyle Busch is questioning the same thing we are up here after watching that replay. Brad's out of his car. And we are under the red flag as things got hot. Coming out of turn number two for Kyle Busch, Chris Busher, and most everybody behind them. A fiery end to Daniel Suarez day. After a 15 car pileup on the back straightaway. With 114 laps to go here in Martinsville. 14 caution flags in the race. And I believe we will set a record for number of cautions in stage three here. Previous record nine. Well we're at eight and a red flag. To boot. So the Martinsville Speedway track crew and the AMR safety crew both quickly on the scene here. There is a list uh, of people involved and you see the damage. And it's not pretty. Some of these cars will be able to continue. And some are in the garage already. Let's take another look at it. Let's put us under the red flag here with now 113 laps to go. Kyle Busch and Chris Busher. Yeah, they had already made contact going into turn one. And then as they came off of turn two, I mean, I, Chris Busher definitely got loose and then they made contact as he came down the racetrack. And boy, it didn't take much, Clint, for them to, for that to just spin both of them around. Well, and, and uh, it could have been, you know, I mean, you won once it easily pointed to retaliation or frustration, whatever, Chris Busher, but he wrecked himself too. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that. I think the wheels locked up. You saw the right front, his left front hook right there as the thing popped up, turned him around and caused one heck of a melee. It's just that time. Once these cautions start coming out at a track like Martinsville, I don't think that's the last one either, by the way. So let's go all the way back to the first contact that you're talking about and uh, see how this develops here. Yes, I mean, you could see where Chris Buescher was trying to put a block. He knew the 18 of Kyle Busch was coming. They made a little bit of contact there. Gets Buescher up out of the groove. He gets loose. And he just stays in the throttle. And that car just continues to rotate and then get lower and make contact with Kyle Busch. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's and everybody's racing. in it. And it, it, it got, they got together getting into the corner. They got together coming off the corner. Saw Ryan Priest's car on fire there. Um, there'll be no hot sauce jokes. And then Daniel Suarez, which the crews had to come and, uh, and put out. So we don't yet have a count on how many cars would be eliminated from this crash. But, you know, the track, uh, they, they pave it five lanes wide. You can run around here three abreast, as we've seen many times today. But when that cl this track clogs up coming off the corner, we saw it. Thursday night in the modified race off turn number four. They stacked up a dozen of them, and we've just seen it here with 15 cars involved. It's very rare, I must say. It, yeah. You know, we usually see, and this is a product of when cautions start coming later in this race, urgency, we, we talked about that. We talk about patience. All that's starting to go out the window right now. Now it's about getting your track position, trying to win this race, trying to get that top 10, trying to make up that lap, whatever it may be. And that this is a product of that. Somebody being aggressive and just throwing caution to the wind. And then all of a sudden people start getting angry. Oh yeah, desperation. That's yeah. what's setting it's in. I mean, that's what I call it. it. You get down to the end of this race, digging yourself out of a hole, like you talked about, finning the position off. Finally, got a you know new life. When I, I told you, and keep saying it's uh, this race flip flopped the way it did. Um, you know, all those things create this havoc. That, by the way, we love about Martinsville. <laughs> oh, say, hey, yeah. Mike, we we flipped. Now that I'm not in that car He's anymore, the and I went down there on fire <laughs> on the racetrack. I love what I'm seeing. We love casual contact, but carnage. Not so much. Let's hear from some of the participants involved, starting with Jamie. Well, certainly dramatic images of the 99 and Daniel Suarez, and thankfully he got out, and you're okay, Daniel. But what did you see from your perspective that led to that? Well, for, first of all, luckily, you know, everyone, I, I saw a couple cars on fire, so, you know, luckily nobody got hurt. Uh, I was very surprised that the, you know, safety people, they took a long time to get to my car. I tried to you know, make sure everything was good, you know, to stop the fire. But for some reason, it just wasn't stopping the fire. In that wreck, I mean, it's nothing that really I can do. I was trying to slam on the brakes to try to slow down, but every, it was a parking lot in there. I couldn't do anything about that. But uh, the 24 kind of like put us in that position. He pushed me out of the way. I had a, a few laps all the tires than everyone else. But uh, overall, we have to keep working today. I mean, this weekend overall wasn't, wasn't great. Uh, we came from the back several times. We had a fast car, but we made bad adjustments, bad calls from the spotter a few times. It just wasn't a clean weekend. Thanks, Daniel. Glad you're okay. Mike? That uh, toss of the water bottle was for the incident Daniel described that happened before. Now, let's show you that one. He certainly got a lot of help right here from William Byron got into the back of him right here but again this is all goes back to he said it he was on older tires he was in the way but that's the thing about Martinsville especially at the end of this thing there's no way to get out of the way he didn't want to be in that situation but it is what it is and unfortunately 24 got because hey you don't blame the 24 either he it was time to go right we've seen where pit strategy can can work Put into you in your situation. best to your best advantage and and so if you can be out there on older tires and maybe catch a caution for somebody else is doing you might benefit from it and that's what they were trying to do and i totally understand that but unfortunately in that situation you know, allowed somebody on newer tires carrying a lot of speed in the corner to make contact with you the thing i do love about this we've seen all this action this carnage cars on fire we still got these two cars. This Denny Hamlin in 11, the 12 of Ryan Blaney. They've been battling it out all race long. Still got Christopher Bell right there in the middle of them. But I love what I'm seeing about this matchup for the end of this race. And don't count out some of these other guys like Joey Logano. And we know there's a little history there between <laughs> Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. But, fellas, what I'm seeing that's different about the way this race has turned, and I think we saw it first uh, with the 42, Ross Chastain. He was on older tires, and when he got worked to the outside, they didn't just keep this a two-groove racetrack. They stuck him outside, and everybody that could ran him three wide, 
So it's three wide when you get somebody stuck up high, and there isn't just isn't always room for three wide here. Well, it's the real <laughs> estate, man. It's a short yeah. track, but that's short track racing at its finest. You know, you've again, it's desperation time. The money's on the line. The pay window's open. Now the frustration set in of this short track and the beast that this thing is. You got to go after that real estate, and right now that real estate's on the bottom of the racetrack. And and, and if you're Ross Chastain in that situation, right? You've been put in that situation. You've fought. You've battled through a lot of things today. You've been a lap down. Now you've gotten yourself back on the lead lap. You're trying to get everything you possibly can out of that car for your team. It's been a rough start to the season for Ross. So even when you're three wide, you're not giving up. No. Right, you're going to maintain your position the best you possibly can, I and all of that. Well, know. I'm not saying he shouldn't. I'm just <laughs> saying that you're not going to if you're Ross Chastain in that situation, and that's only going to add to some of the chaos. There's only one car that wins the three wide situation and conversation at this place. The they got the on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> twelve, twelve wheels corner better than four. I get it. So if you want, I know we've already made our picks, but if you want an idea who's going to win this race, take a look down the field at who has no damage. The 11, maybe the 12. There are a couple of others that have kept their nose and tail very, very clean to this point. And I think your winner will come from that group of the cars that look very pristine if we this can, deep in the race. Let's see if we can get old Denny on the, the radio here. Hey, Denny Hamlin's boy, you're in the booth. You got us? Yep. Man. Things are heating up, literally, on the racetrack. Had cars on fire, carnage behind you in the rear view. That's the thing you want to see. You leading this thing, how are you going to keep these guys behind you? Uh, just got to keep control of the restarts. That's the biggest thing. And you know, we got an extra set of tires over most of the field. Uh, the problem is you don't want to start last with them. So um, you know, just trying to figure out when to pit, make sure we keep our track position. Uh, if we do that, we'll be in good shape. As the sun has went down, as you, have you felt this track go through a transition? It was Is it looser now? Is it tighter? What's it done as this thing has cooled off? Well, I don't know that the conditions, you know, the conditions have changed, but it's more about the, the rubber on the racetrack. With all these cautions, uh, keep happening and keep cleaning the racetrack off. And, you know, it's going to be harder and harder to lay that rubber like we had down uh, earlier in the day. All right, buddy. Man, I saw you in a shoe commercial this weekend. You better use them things and get to running. Let's see some action. I got my tennies on. Let's go. <laughs> Denny Hamlin trying to become this season's eighth different winner. Uh, let's go back to the Care Center and Jamie. What a day it's been for Brad Keselowski, who had, well, handling issues all day. Power steering was intermittent there, Brad, and then you end early here. What did you see there in that pileup? Yeah, just unfortunately we got caught up in it, Jamie. I, I guess it looked like some guys got in front of me and then it was just the, the track was blocked. I think I was just barely going to get stopped at the time and somebody clobbered me from behind and just uh, tore us up. So uh, it's a bummer. I think we were really good. We drove up into the top five and uh, lost the power steering, like you said. And I was able to manhandle it around the racetrack, but I couldn't get down pit road, you know, where you go to turn your pit box and uh, every pit stop, it wasn't my cruise fault. I just, I couldn't get the car stopped in the box and pointed the right way. and. That kind of got me in the back, and then I got dumped. <laughs> Recovered from that, and then we got caught up in a wreck that uh, just didn't look like I could miss. So just kind of one of those compounding, frustrating short track days. But uh, with d decent speed, just got to figure out why we lost the power steering. It kind of put us behind and got us caught up. When you have a power steering issue and it goes out, how exhausting is that for you at this place? Yeah, it's it's really tough. I mean, you got a, a really tiny 8 to 1 steering box. You know, you go back in the day 30, 40 years ago, None of the drivers had power steering, but they had like a 16 to 1 steering box. Now you got, you know, 8 to 1, 10 to 1 steering boxes. You can do the math real quick. They're twice as hard to steer, so you just, uh, it's, a, it's a really tough day. All right, Brad, thanks. We'll see you at Richmond. So Brad Keselowski among those eliminated in this pileup with 114 laps to go. Cleanup continues here. The backstretch pileup and resulting fire on Ryan Priest and Daniel Suarez after Kyle Busch and Chris Buescher got together coming out of turn two.
Welcome to today's Martinsville Meditation. Let's take a moment here to find calm within the chaos. Noticing in this moment what's troubling you. Anger, frustration. And when you identify how you feel and exhaling it all away. Wait, isn't this a 500 mile race? Uh, yeah. Just keep on breathing, guys. I don't know about you, Boyer, but I so needed that. Oh, man. That's exactly like what was talking when I was on the radio with Ryan Blaney at the first degree. <laughs> That's exactly, he, 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 he listens has, to that he, tape audio right there. He has that pumped in. Yeah, radio. meditation from that sweet voice we just heard. What has me concerned about that lady right there, she said 500 miles. We'll still be going when it's time to go to Richmond. <laughs> 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 Too much meditation on that. Hey, well, let's Miles, see. laps, whatever. Let's see if uh, Joey Logano, what, what kind of zen space he's in. Hey, Joey, this is uh, the guys up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Loud and clear. Well, we're seeing a lot of crazy chaos, and it's getting to be that time. So tell us, how, how calm are you right now? How do you see this thing playing out here? I'm calm right now. I don't know how long that'll last. Uh, you know, there's still you know, a fair amount of, of race left. Probably another pit stop or so uh, at some point here. So uh, it's at a point you don't want to lose your track position, though. Uh, you know, once you get back there, it becomes quite the slugfest back there. So, uh, you know, we got our car positioned in a decent spot. We had a good recovery so far with the Shell Pencil Mustang. We're a little off there towards the beginning of the race. And uh, Paul and the guys got the car pretty close so um, i'm in the hunt now so anything can happen as we know Oh, yeah, no, you're definitely in the hunt. You know, we saw where your car was pretty good last night when the lights are on, sun's going down, track temp's cooling down. You guys made some good adjustments. What about those, mainly those two, the 12 and the 11? You also got Christopher Bell in there. What do you have for those guys? Yeah, Christopher right now is on some older tires, so uh, that'll be kind of interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, you know, I'd say the 12 and us are fairly close at this point. And uh, I haven't gotten near the 11 in a while to see if I... <laughs> if we're close anymore, you know, we, we were at a point that we went down a lap, uh, and, and I think now we're, we're competitive enough to run with him, so uh, I'm not sure where he's better than us yet. Um, when I got cleared to second there, he was already pretty far out, so uh, we'll kind of wait and see when I get there. All right, well, we've seen what happens when the two of you don't stay clear of one another, <laughs> but uh, hey, it's going to be exciting here to watch. You got a great shot. Uh, good job to you and the team. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, man, thank you. Almost clean. We'll be getting going. <laughs> Well, folks at home, if you want to be a stock car racer, oh, stop oh, that. Man. Come on. That's <laughs> not nice. It's not the guy. You didn't ask him about his zen level, the level I, of zen. Or, he said he was calm, but not anymore. Not his teammate calm. <laughs> All right. You want to be a stock car racer? Well, hop on board with Alex Bowman. Whoops, here's Jamie. Well, Alex Bowman was one of the fastest cars today. Then he had a loose wheel, and right after that is the carnage you just saw. How do you describe what happened here in the last 20 minutes? Uh, it's very frustrating, right? Um, I hate it for everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, um, everybody at Ally that gives us so much support, Chevrolet. Everybody works so hard to, uh, to give us what we need, and we had such a good race car today, such a fast Ally Camaro. And, um, you know, had that loose right front wheel, and that's just part of racing. Things are going to happen. Our pit crew is phenomenal every week, and um, I make mistakes. People make mistakes. It happens, and put us behind the eight ball there, and then they all crash in front of me, and I stopped, and guys behind me didn't stop. So um, one of those deals I hated. I feel like we had a car capable of winning, which says a lot because I drive this place completely wrong. I am so bad here. Greg and, and Tim and everybody on this 48 team, have their work cut out for them to make a car work for me and um they did that this week it was phenomenal couldn't ask anything more of it but uh not much to show for it thanks alex and engines are refired mike yes the yellow flag is out there are 27 cars on the track and three under repair on pit road let's hear from one of the crew chiefs regan well todd gordon down off the pit box right now your car's been good on long runs do you need to do something to make better on short runs or hope for a long run here? We've talked about what we need to do and, and that end of stage two, we took a swing at it. We know a little bit more about what we'll need to do, but 
still got 115 laps to go, so hopefully we get one on long runs and we can show our, our strength and then work on it for a short run at the end. Good luck, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say with 113 you know, laps to go, I wouldn't make a massive adjustment right there for takeoff speed. I still think it could play right back into your wheelhouse for this team. Well, we saw they already tried making some adjustments, and it, even really the work. adjustments didn't really help. So I, I think it, you, know, you just got to hope that you have enough laps whenever you know, we get to the end and it goes green, that you have enough laps for it to run itself out and play to your strength. I, I, you know, you think about racetracks and the mentally, you know, toughness that it takes to, to navigate through this, this sport and this schedule that we have. I think of, you know, the Talladegas and Daytonas and, and you know, what, just the mental strain that you have because of the three, the four wide, all the stuff that in. But when I leave Martinsville, I left it all here, man. I'm telling you, just <laughs> completely worn out. One of those racetracks where you get back and your brother's like, man, that was a good move or that was a good pass. That was a close moment. And you just you have to go back and watch it in replay because you were reacting to so much. Your, your mind was digesting so much. You don't even remember it. No doubt about it. This place is tough. <laughs> Earlier today, the Xfinity race was completed. Uh, they began it Friday night after 91 laps. They had rain. There's Josh Berry's Camaro and the veteran short tracker, which once led every lap of a 300 lap late model race here, held off Anthony Alfredo to score his first ever Xfinity win in only his 13th start in the series. And he wins for Dale Earnhardt Jr. I've never cried like I cried today. <laughs> over over racing anything i ever did or anything my dad did i don't know why that brought that emotion out of me because it's, i've never experienced that before but um i just wanted this so bad for josh maybe as bad as he's wanted it super cool dale super earnhardt jr cool. and his sister run that team junior motorsports and uh dale jr handpicked josh berry uh to run late models for them and then drive some races in the xfinity series he led 95 laps. Well, and just the American dream. You're right. I mean, the, the, the work, the dreaming, the, the effort, the dedication to stick with it, to have a friend in Dale Jr., to give him that opportunity and not only give him an opportunity in late model racing, which, by the way, was probably good enough dream, right? Right. To put him in an Xfinity car because of what he saw and not only the guy that Josh Berry is, but the race car driver that he is, and he proved it right there. Coming to a racetrack, which, by the way, not usually you see somebody their first win at Martin. No, right. I mean, all. this is a place that you have to to learn and, and, and buy your time. But that being said, it is a short track. And I know he's got hundreds of laps around here in a late model played Maybe right thousands, in his favor. Yeah. yeah, that was very cool to see. Great win for Barry and. Uh, 110 to go here. Denny Hamlin. Out front of his teammate Christopher Bell. Then the Penske teammates of Blaney and Logano. Chase Elliott. Quite a few of those names missing from the list of drivers who have gone to victory lane this season. Seven races, seven winners. Michael McDowell for Front Row Motorsports. Christopher Bell on the road course. Nobody expected that either. William Byron in Miami. Kyle Larson. You knew he'd win. How long would it take? Las Vegas. Race number four. Martin Truex Jr. at Phoenix. Ryan Blaney at Atlanta. And Joey Logano, who had minimal dirt experience. I would call him a surprise winning at Bristol on the dirt. Can this 11 and Denny Hamlin make it eight? Here comes Bell, comes 24 of William Byron to get some tires. That's two drivers and teams that had an additional set, just like Denny Hamlin said he had. Now all of these teams will be down to one set, like most of the leaders out there. Regan? Well, you see the 20 car, Christopher Bell, finally got good track position up there in second place, but ultimately decided that they were going to pit right here. They're very concerned about the restart. They've got considerably older tires than anybody else around them. And the 24 car, of William Byron, He's been pretty quiet on the radio, just slipping those front tires just a little bit too much as you see him pulling the fenders and trying to get that car cleaned up for the end of the race. 
Fellas, I like that on Christopher Bell. If you're concerned about worn tires, the way these restarts have been going here recently, I wouldn't want to be up there either. <laughs> you don't want to be the pinball, that's no. for sure. It looked like uh, the 24 William Byer maybe he had a little contact. Uh, that wasn't necessarily the contact with the 99 of, of Suarez, but he had some, some right side damage. So it looked like they were also wanting to fix that damage as well as get those four fresh good years. Ross Chastain, too fast entering pit road. At this point in the race, it's just a tough situation. I, I would much rather have the track position, I think, Jeff, because of what we just saw. You can put tires on right there, and that wreck hand it lands in your lap, and your day's done. You know, you could have had the fastest car all day long. You put yourself in a situation, you lose that track position that's so key, you could get caught up in something that wasn't even you're doing. Yeah, the one thing I would, if you could start on the front row, then I, I would think it's worth staying out there on some older tires, mm -hmm. which Christopher Bell would have been. It's a risk, it's a gamble, but I don't know, that might have been one worth taking to see what happens, because as you already have mentioned, and I feel the same way, more cautions are yeah. coming. Well, then that's the gamble. Is there gonna be more cautions, or are we gonna run this thing 100 laps? Looks like only five cars from that wreck are going, maybe six, yeah, five, are gonna be out of the race. Uh, Keselowski, Suarez, Bowman, Priest and Haley have gone to the garage. Everybody else is able to continue, some with uh, considerable damage. <laughs> We've kind of went full circle, guys, with the mentality, the thought process of this weekend. This is pretty much the time that they were going to start, going into this weekend, <laughs> that they were going to start the weekend. And then all the while through the rain, we made adjustments for that air pressure, thrashing to make sure that we did something to make our old hot rod fast for that. Well, by the way, it rained out. Now we're racing in the sunshine. Well, I wasn't really ready for that, so we've been working hard to chase down that, that uh, scenario for your setup. Now we're back to where we started, Larry. Is my car capable of getting a job done right now? Have you kept up with this racetrack? I mean, how hard is that? We're not back to where we started because you knocked every damn corner <laughs> off. <laughs> hey, I'm just, Martinsville put some good investment in some beautiful lights here, and we're going to get to see them come on and maybe see some glowing rotors as these guys enter the corners. All right, we're going to come green this time with 104 lap to go. Hamlin, who's led 190 laps, and Blaney, who's led 156, will restart on the front row. Joey this Logano race is with true X out. This is the battle, the 11 and the 12, and don't take your eye off of that 22 or the 19 of Martin Shurek Jr. Love what I've seen up here with these cars up front. Green, green, green. Time to go, boys. These guys are leaning all over one another. That 19's not cutting the 22 any room right there whatsoever. And the 22's not going to cut no. him any room here. A little contact. These guys have a little history Bring here. Also. Oh, they oh. might get him turned around. Hang on. Oh, man, Larson oh, oh, got oh. into the right rear, almost turned him around also. Oh, he's going to give him well, position oh, back. Joey knows he's going to be. He knew better than to get in front of him because he's going to go for a ride. Oh, he's got to let Mark Church Jr. calm down before he tries to make this pass again. Yeah, but then what do you do? Larson you might have just straightened him out. <laughs> oh, without a doubt he did. Oh, so we got more action out. back here. Yeah, Chase Briscoe getting caught up on the high side, three and they're going to three wide him. Well, we talk about those older tires. He's got a little bit older tires than some of these guys that are racing around him right now. This is for fifth. Teammates, and three wide behind them. How about Kevin Harvick coming into the picture? Track's coming to him. Still three wide back here behind them. You know Ricky Stenhouse. Whoa, no, Reddick. Reddick. Hold on to it, William. Slid right up, got into the 24. Who's that, 47 possibly? Yes. Stenhouse. Not the first time, maybe about the no. fifth time Stenhouse been three wide on the outside today. He ain't scared. 
He's looking for the cushion out there. Eric Jones off pace. He's staying on the lead lap, but may may have dropped the cylinder in uh, Richard Petty's number 43. He's fallen to the back of the field. Lap times right on top of one another with his top five. How the heck is Ryan Newman still in the top ten in eighth position? That car is beat up. Indestructible. <laughs> Made it through that last parking yeah. lot. And so is the car. <laughs> There's your Xfinity fastest lap on the last lap of this race. Chase Elliott and Joey Logano and Truex all these five quicker than race leader Denny Hamlin who is cruising. Eighth place here. Nice. Bob Ross has done a great job today. Yeah. Great job to both of these guys. Yeah the problem with Ryan Newman in the six and Regan Smith can check on it they just put their last set of sticker tires on that six car that last trip to pit road now with just a little under 100 laps to go and that explains Larry why he just ran his fastest lap of this entire race. I got my eyes glued to the lap times of these race cars. I mean, we've been seeing it all day long with this 12 car and Blaney running them down on a long run, but it's not what you see so far. Jamie, how about the leaders tires? Well, right now everything seems to be going perfect for the 11. The car has been good. They've worked on it, gone in the right direction. And icing on the cake, they have two sets of sticker tires sitting here waiting if needed. Wow. Eric Jones has taken uh, his car to the garage. So he will finish I believe 29th today. One thing I'm seeing right now Clint this this track temp coming down and the track being shaded a bit of an equalizer like we're yeah. seeing the lap times kind of plateau out when when it's daytime and the, the track is hot and slick we see cars show speed at different times and have more fall off right now Denny Hamlin's being able to hang pretty tough here out front. But I think you can attribute that to the temperature like you said. But when I look down at that racetrack I don't see the rubber that I saw when that sun was beating down on it. The other thing is lap traffic. I think it's as if they're stretched out right here running their groove using the whole racetrack having the real estate to run the whole racetrack. That's one thing. Once you get to lap traffic and having to move around finding different real estate to pass a guy in front of you. That's what starts to separate the fastest car to the not so fast. Yeah, they keep going here, no doubt about it. Lap traffic is going to play a big role. Funny how the back bumper of Joey Logano's car exactly now matches the profile of the front bumper of Chase Elliott's car. <laughs> well, he's going to have to go here. Say, yeah, his nine, teammates running him down now. Uh, nine need to go, and every lap he's behind him. You see those brakes glowing. It's abusing that equipment. It's taking some life out of the tires. Brakes, I don't know, you know, brakes will cool down after he gets by Joey Logano if that happens, but he's he's gonna have to put a little more pressure on him and really force the issue here. Well, what I see there is he can't get off the corner with him. He can get into the corner way, way, way harder, and that goes right back to what you saw with the brake temperatures that you spoke of, but Joey can get off the corner very strong right here, drives away from him, start to process all over again. You like what you see with the five car right there outside in but he caught him too quick he caught him if he would have caught him five feet past there he would have been able to make that pass. And they're about to have company with Christopher Bell and Kevin Harvick closing in. Boy, well, Chase Elliott almost made a pass in the outside of Joey Logano yep. there because he got forced up high when Kyle Larson went to the inside. Here he goes outside. Yeah, not this time. But Chase sends it in. He can get in the corner way deeper than Joey Logano. He's going to make that pass. Oh, he's going to make that pass. Wow, Power that's, <laughs> that's impressive. Elliott, the hard way, takes over fourth place. Regan. Well, guys, just to update Kevin Harvick in his day, man, it's been up and down for them. They have made some significant changes in this car, spring rubbers, air pressure, rounds, so many rounds. At one point, I heard the word Tommy John surgery being mentioned for somebody on the pit crew. They finally got this thing dialed up, though, and it's pretty fast for him right now. He's happy, just wanted the track position. 
Yeah, here comes Christopher Bell into the picture with those tires that we talked about. And, and honestly, I was telling you, I thought track position was needed, but this could be a very good decision for them. Well, well, luckily they got a clean restart, so not a lot of wrecks and more cautions, and that's what's been able to pull him up there with those fresher tires. See the five of Larson now trying to make that same move on the outside of Joey Logano that worked well for his teammate Chase Elliott ahead of him. I think that just shows you how little bit of grip this racetrack has right now with all the rubber because those tires that Christopher Bell that he has they're only about nine laps fresher but that's a big difference right now. Well I think that's one thing but all those cycles with all the cautions that long red flag things like that I think that plays into effect on that as well. It's not just the laps it's the time on. Tell you what. You know, I chose Martin Truex Jr. earlier. I'm not counting him out. He's putting some good lap times together. One of the fastest cars on the track right now. Yeah, they both have started to catch him and Ryan Blaney. We're catching the leader at Denny Hamlin. This is shaping up to be big time race. Man, I tell you what, ultra competitive lap times right there. Though a 77 year leader, 76 Blaney, a 77 a true X, pretty tight. Whew. Slap traffic. We just talked about it a few laps ago. This is going to be what determines this race. Who can get through this lap traffic? Who can move around and have that? Uh, you know that that's the option that is hard to do here. It's one thing to go fast, wrap around the curve, do something like that. But when you have to move out, open your entrance up, come across, turn left in the middle of that rubber. Those are the things that you're asking a lot out of a car. Denny Hamlin's lead has disappeared. Ryan Blaney has caught him and Martin Truex is only two car lengths back. Yeah we, we already know that Denny Hamlin you know they've been working he and Chris Gaphart crew chief been working all day on longer runs and and there's just nobody that can keep up with that 12 car when we get to this stage of a run. I don't even know the 19 car has but or can but he's certainly making an effort at it but I do think Denny Hamlin start starting to suffer a little bit with those older tires in this long run and it's exactly the same spot it was right in the middle of the corner you can see Danny having to check up just a little bit where that 12 car Ryan Blaney can really wrap that curve and get off of the corner strong. This is the second most laps that Hamlin has ever led here. He led 296 in the March of 2009 but finished second to Jimmy Johnson. He's led 218 today. Five car Kyle Larson to have trouble getting around his teammate of Chase Elliott and able to 20 Christopher Bell to get underneath of him right there. He, now he you might be able to. All right. So you're in a situation where you can't move your teammate. Right. What I can do is let this 20 car do it. <laughs> maybe, maybe he can get, let him go up there and do it and I can pass them both back. <laughs> Jamie. And speaking of Larson Martinsville is not a place he has a lot of confidence at. His crew chief Cook Daniels said they went to work. He watched video on board with Denny and Joey watching how they race this track and he's very good at adapting. He's had a good run today even overcame a slow pit stop on the last cycle and he's still hanging tough battling for that top five. It's a good point Jamie statistically this is Kyle Larson's worst racetrack. But now he drives for Rick Hendrick whose team has 25 victories here. I was going to say so many deep resources to dive into if you're Kyle Larson. You know one you have Chase Elliott who's been really strong here won the last race here. Uh, yeah William Byron's run really good here uh, as well. So then they go all through the history. No doubt Kyle Larson. Um, I, I think whether he didn't have confidence in himself everybody else had confidence he could come here and run good. And his lap traffic right here enabled Ryan Blaney to get right to his rear bumper. DJ e. McLeod and now Chase Briscoe, who had gotten back onto the lead lap, but now goes one down in 20th place. Now you're Denny Hamlin. How hard are you going to battle and fight this 12 car? You still got 71 laps to go with everything you got. <laughs> but I tell you, he's really struggling to keep the front end pointed. At that three quarter mark in the corner and that's where Ryan Blaney's been so strong all day long. You see it right there. You just wrap around there and keep turning. Just a little bit longer. How <laughs> many times have we've seen this all day long somebody gets past Kyle Larson just like Christopher well, Bell did and now here he's 
going back after him, making the pass. Oh, See, yeah. Larson made the move to the inside because he saw Josh Balicki up ahead and knew that he'd have a pick if he needed it in the corner. Well, he used it for just that. Well, and also, how much did Christopher Bell use up those fresh tires coming through all that traffic? See, Ryan Blaney's starting to push the envelope a little bit with his brakes, pushing in there hard with, with uh, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Starting to show some temperature in the front. Also starting to see Denny Hamlin run a little bit different line than we typically see him run. He's wrapping that curb it's very similar to what the 12 of Ryan Blaney is doing, and he actually pulled away from him there through one and, and two. And it's doing exactly what what I see right there. It's blocking Blaney from running the line he's doing, enticing him to run in the corner harder. Now he's gotten some temperature in his brakes. They're getting hot, showing some color. By the way, that plays into making your car tighter as it builds air pressure with the heat in, in the brakes. All those things are things that you can do inside a car to keep that car behind you. You see the brake temperature right there. 67 laps to go as they cross the stripe. If you're Ryan Blaney, though, you got to be careful, not let him entice you into doing things that you're, you know, di didn't get you there. Don't change your game. Stick to your plan. Stick to knowing that that car is fast. Get off them brakes. Let them cool down a little bit. Go right back to rolling and wrapping that bottom like you were. Just hard to calm down in this situation, isn't it, Jeff? You saw right there, Denny Hamlin. He, he, I don't know if he just drove a little deeper in the corner, but he was not able to run as low through one and two. That allowed the 12 of Blaney to, to close back in. You see Denny running a little bit higher there also again. Hey, uh, coming out of two, Kyle Larson just gave Chase Elliott the bumper. Well, he's certainly been patient with him and had a lot of frustration right there, you know, and I get it. That's a teammate. Chase Elliott is, is uh, extremely good at this racetrack, obviously won the last race here, but you can't go through a teammate. you got to figure out how to put yourself in a position to get him. Here's a look at it coming up off the corner. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Time to go, man. And yeah, I mean, you know, th there's just certain ways that you you got. If you're racing your teammate, you've got to show him that you're much faster. You've got to poke your nose out on getting into the corner, down the straightaway. You know, not 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 just get into the rear bumper. And this is exactly what the five of Larson has done now. Problem is, every time he gets to his inside, he can't complete the pass. He needs the real estate to move up off the corner and can't do it. He can't turn on the throttle like we've been talking about. He can turn under him, but he can't get off the corner. Well, this is, look who's closing into this group now, Kevin Harvick. Almost got in the wall right there. Wrapping that bottom like we've been talking about the leaders doing. Really starting to see this racetrack move around more rubber than I've seen in a long time on this racetrack on that concrete and it's it's opening up the groove. You see right there how high Chase Elliott's running getting a good run off the corner. car in the mix there. B.J. McLeod. Christopher Bell all over Larson who cannot find a way past Elliott. Well I'm just wondering if maybe Christopher Bell tried to make a move on Chase Elliott also and that slowed him up and allowed him uh, you know, allowed Larson to get to the inside and make that pass. So they're they're both working really hard trying to make that pass on Chase Elliott but not an easy task. Well, you know what I'm seeing there with Kyle Larson. He can turn into the corner, turn in the middle of the corner, but his car's tight on the throttle. Throttle tight, if you will, up off the corner where he needs that real estate that he doesn't have with Chase being there. Back up front, Ryan Blaney is getting into the corner better than Denny Hamlin, but the 11 you see there has better drive off. You'll see it all side by side.
We've just hit 50 straight green flag laps. That is the longest green flag run in stage three, which has just been full of cautions and one red flag. As you saw during side by side coverage, Ryan Blaney had a look, a little sniff at the lead, but nothing there. Now there are two cars ahead, single file. Uh, James Davison, who's been staying up and out of the way, is Blaney has a peak, and then Ross Chastain, then clear sailing for a little bit before they catch the next pack of lap traffic. 50 laps to go, and Larry, with all these cautions, I hate to ask, but what are the trends? Well, Mike, you would think with 14 cautions already, we'll probably have it that many or half of that many in the next 50 laps, but the trends do not show it, Mike. I looked at the last turn three races. Excuse me, Larry. There was your trend, Larry. <laughs> yeah, right on cue, Chase Briscoe. I only missed it by two laps. Uh, <laughs> Chase Briscoe you has can't spun make this stuff up. into the fence. In and turn three, you know, and, and Ryan Blaney finally got off of that curb, Jeff. I was watching him right there. He moved up. He was started to do that outside in and where he was entering high and crossing over. And I was really liking what he was doing there, thinking he was going to make the pass. He might be the only one that didn't want that caution to come out. But I, I think there's several others that did need to see it and want some four, uh, want four fresh Goodyears. I think a fender um, damage cut that tire down. So Briscoe would have been the free pass, but unfortunately he is the caution. So I'm sorry, Larry, I interrupted you. You were talking. No, that, <laughs> hey, that we, it's like we had that scripted. <laughs> Almost every right time. Right on cue. Well, guys, this will be the money stop right here because everybody's going to come get four fresh tires. And other than Denny Hamlin, this will be the last set for basically every team that's running up near the front. Hit your marks. Do not speed on pit road. Make sure you get in your box well. Guys, do Hit your job. Hit all those lug nuts. You said money stop, and that's exactly what it is. Don't beat yourself here. 19 lead lap cars head toward pit road in turn three. 47 laps to go, Jamie. Kyle Larson comes into his pits from the fifth position. He said he feels pretty good and he's turning better than his teammate in the nine, he noticed. So they're making another adjustment there, a wedge adjustment and four tires. The 11 of Denny Hamlin. Denny said brakes were getting hot there, so this was a welcome caution. Entry is a little skating and he's building too tight. Regan. Mark Drex Jr. needs to finish the corner just a little bit better. A little too much wheel spin late exit on that race car. The 12 of Ryan Blaney. It's the same complaint all day long. We've got to go earlier in the runs. Just a touch tight center right now. And the nine car of Chase Elliott. Biggest thing for him. They told him to stop short so he could get out of the pit and have a good stop here. Martin Truex beats Hamlin off pit road. That's oh, big. And some contact I think between the nine and the 12. Oh, you see three spots lost on the 12. Let's see what happens right here. Oh, oh. running over the air hose. Oh, that's going to be a penalty, I believe. And then it gets worse for him because he goes around yeah. the corner. Well, that's taking equipment out of the pit box. So, yes. And there's the race off pit road. Yeah, Mike, that definitely is going to be a penalty on the 12, I'm afraid. Man. It'll be the third straight race at Martinsville for Blaney with a pit road penalty. Let's uh, compare Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin on that stop. Well, we've we've seen it all day, right, Mike? Where we've seen one of these Joe Gibbs racing crew, uh, crew chiefs be in that mid 12 seconds. This time it happened to be Denny Hamlin's teammate, Martin Truex Jr. In the green. That is the difference. That nine tenths of a second for the pit crew, two tenths for the driver. Puts the New Jersey driver out front. We're going to have a bunch of wave arounds. Looks like uh, eight of them out in front of Truex. Tell you what, we're going to see is one heck of a restart coming up. And if you're Blaney, you go back to the 12 car and that team. You know, if you're you, if you're him, you needed that long run. We we saw that all race long. His long run speed was superior to the rest. The caution comes out. That's the first dagger. Now, with the pit road penalty right there, that's the ending. And see, the the way I look at this is that 
that was pressure on that pit crew of we got to have a perfect stop to get try to beat Denny Hamlin. Because uh, of, we know that we're at a deficit because on our take Because we know that he's so good on the short runs. Laney trying to become the season's first two race winner. After seven races so far this year. Runner up in both Martinsville races last year after overcoming pit road penalties. Now he's going to have to restart in the rear because of removing equipment from the box. And, and I kind of mentioned it, but I, I saw in the, in, in the background too, you saw that damage to the right side, right from the right rear tire of Chase Elliott. He made contact. I thought it was with Blaney when he came out of his pit box. He's going to have to get stopped right here, let the field go. Yeah, all right, now he stops. Next Sunday, we roll into Richmond, where America's Best will battle, beginning uh, 1.30 Eastern, leading up to the green flag at 2.30. Only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. More short track racing from that the Commonwealth finest. of Virginia. Yeah. All right, teammates on the front row for Joe Gibbs Racing, Truex Hamlin. Here we go. Oh, Truex ran a little wide. The track. Not wide enough, though. Better do it again. It's going to get in position right here. You just, you cannot beat that 11 on these short runs. No. It's just so strong. And now you're looking in your rear view, trying to hold off the five as well with a big run. Forty laps to go when they come back to the stripe, Jamie. Eleven crew chief Chris Gabehart said, "Remember our motto all day long: flex that muscle and flex it right now." And once he took the lead, the whole team applauded and pumped their fists. He did just that. That was a lot of muscle flex on the outside, like that, with your teammate. And he knew he needed Ooh. to do it quick too, Jeff. Harvick just slid up oh, into Christopher three wide Bell. Down, coming off a of turn four, guys are slamming into one another. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, Denny has started up front so many times on so many restarts. He knows exactly what his car is going to do, and and he, he just has confidence it's going to stick and it has that short run speed, but this thing's anything but over. And Blaney is mired back in 19th after serving the penalty. He is still the last car on the lead lap with 38 to go. Well, you said the short run speed. I uh, just looked at our, our board right here, Jeff. You know who has a fast slap? Denny Hamlin. Shocking. <laughs> now you see that things are turned around a little bit here for the Hendrick teammates as Chase Elliott now trying to make that pass on Kyle Larson. And he's there. Joey Logano, who started this race on the front row, can't get the drive off this time to beat Kyle Larson and sends it in again. And if you're Kyle Larson, he can't get down. Now the freight train's coming. Tell you what, guys, Chase Elliott laid down a lap that last time by. He was two tenths faster than Truex in second, about a tenth and a half faster than our leader. That time, one tenth faster. He's running these guys down. Yeah, but he's got to go through two of them. Yeah, <laughs> no, a tall order. With 35 laps to go. Tight squeeze right there. Christopher Bell dove down underneath Larson. These two, I would say, are going to race each other pretty hard. Yeah, a lot of dirt racing and a lot of hard racing between these guys over the years. <laughs> Last weekend. So Blaney's picked up three spots from the back, but he's still more than a quarter of a lap down and a ton of traffic to try to get back even up to the top 10. Currently 15th. And up into 14th. If you've saved anything, breaks, anything at all, this is where you're using every bit, every last ounce of it. Drive that baby off in the corner and get it. Well, I thought it was interesting. We heard 
the report right from Jamie about how Denny's Denny was complaining about his brakes being hot. Well, he's not running slow laps right now. He's running qualifying laps here every single lap. Be curious to see what happens with his brakes. He's actually moved his lineup a little bit. He's moving, entering high, kind of coming down across. And man, I tell you what, Truex is hounding on him. Rolling the middle pretty good. It's going to be interesting when you get to lap traffic. See right there, a half a tenth faster Martin Truex was than the 11 of Denny Hamlin. But Kyle Larson has now faded to seventh behind uh, his other Hendrick teammate, William Byron. Yeah, Kyle Larson took off pretty good on that restart, got himself some good track position, but ever since then just ha has not been able to maintain that that kind of pace. Don't know. Maybe he's another one of those guys has more of a long run speed car. Hey, 10th place race right here. <laughs> Kyle Busch is trying to move up on uh, Ryan Newman. Well, I just thought Ryan Newman's car was beat up and bad <laughs> until I look at Kyle Busch's car. You know, the other thing that if you're if you're Larson right there, they probably made an adjustment too, Jeff. You got a short run. You got to cool the temperatures. I bet you they built the pressures up a little bit, pumped them up. And a lot of times maybe over a chest, a little greed in that situation. I've been there. I've done that 100 times. I ain't saying that's what they did, but certainly can happen in a track like this in this situation with not very many laps to go in a caution. So Newman holds off Bush to hang on to that top 10 spot. But this is just such an example of what Martinsville is all about. Survival, survival, survival. There's so, we, you know, we've seen so many have issues, including these guys that we're watching right here. And yet, here they are in the top 10. And here comes Blaney, who is 12th, uh -oh. closing right up on the Bush-Newman battle. That's oh. not good. But he uh -oh. hasn't survived yet. <laughs> Man, that, that's going to be a problem. I tell you what, better get my camera on the leaders. It is heating up. Truex is on the bumper of your leader. Denny Ham looking to the inside right now. Could be the pass. Lapped car ahead. If oh, they take the him three wide. Bit. Just barely clipped the curb and you can yep. see paid the price. Denny's car's gotten tight. See Martin's really rolling the middle way better than him getting that straight shot off. Now we're going to look to the inside again. Boy, the 19. Did you see how good his car rolled through that corner to get position on Denny Hamlet? Still going to be hard to comp uh, complete this pass. Denny's a little bit better down in three and four than Truex, but look how good Truex is down here. But we saw Denny being patient, staying, you know, his composure inside that car. He did the same thing with Ryan Blaney. It's going to be here. You got to, if I'm Martin Truex, I'm setting him up for these lappers I'm catching. I'm going to use one as a pick. 22 to go this time. Truex to the inside. And Blaney has now busted into the top 10 after his pass of Kyle Busch. Oh, bang and crash. That was Bubba Wallace almost getting turned right there. He and uh, Austin Dillon. But they continue. Chris Bush, or rather Chase Briscoe, limping around the outside like he may have a tire going down. Here's uh, the contact between Newman and Bubba. As if that left rear fender wasn't bad enough, that might have straightened it out. <laughs> Here comes Truex again to the inside of Denny Hamlin. Can't complete the pass, so he's going to have to enter higher with him and turn underneath of him, Jeff, in my opinion. Here's some Denny Hamlin audio. Yeah, so, you know, we already heard about him having some brake uh, temp issues on that last long run. He's running extremely hard right now into the corner, trying to keep Mark Tricks Jr. behind him. Turn those fans on, try to keep the temp out of uh, those brakes as much as you can. But I'm going to tell you right now, Mark Truex Jr. has his number. It's just how much is he going to have to use up Denny Hamlin in order to get this pass made? 
He's not going to, you can see Denny Hamlin's holding his own and, and takes yep. that real estate away from him on exit. He's going to have to move up a little bit and get a better run up off to where he can get in position and kind of move up, take that position, getting in. Because if they exit door to door, there's no chance he's going to pass. And, and oh, how hard that is to do when you know you're see looking right in your there? mirror and you see the nine of Chase Elliott right there also. His car moves up right there in the center of the corner, that three quarter mark. He can't hold it down, can't keep the throttle down. And away he goes, but he's just going to have to stay patient, stay in this oh, thing. Maybe use this lap car. If he can use him as a pick, this might get That's it done. Exactly what it, oh, yeah, he got it. There. It's going to have to Davison go. way to the outside. And Ooh, Hamlin oh, guesses still it. I'm telling you, he still. And hangs on. I'm sure, it's going to have to move him right here. you got to move him you up. you got to move him up the racetrack. I know it's hard to do with a, a teammate. He thought about it right, right. there. Now he should be able to do it now. Now he's in position where if he can get in the corner, not wheel hop, but move him up the track a little bit. There he goes. Now he's up. Now he's going to get the pass made. Uh, it's not over yet. I think he's nope. going to have to move him about another car width. <laughs> he better hurry up. He's got another lapper. Now he's moved up again. Now the next lapper has been running the bottom of the racetrack. Let's see what happens when the leaders get to him. If he does, and I'm him, I'm moving him up into that guy's lane. <laughs> I hate to say it. But there it is. Just, yep. True X. Pass. As the lap car pulls it, aside. Alfredo did a great job there. Let him race their race. Ooh, Denny tried to drive really deep into the corner to get back to the rear bumper. True X. Don't turn your back on Chase Elliott right there for the taking. And lots more traffic ahead. Where I see Chase being able to pounce on these guys, for whatever reason, he can get into the corner a car length, car length and a half deeper than they can. You also, the other thing that I like is he's able to move up inner higher, kind of cross back over. There's see that, how much deeper he can get in? That's what I was going to say. There, there it is. There's that entry speed that Chase Elliott has. But Hamlin continues to have really good drive off the corner. See Chase trying to set up Denny Hamlin uses that high Whoa, entry that out. late arc to get that straight shot off make that straightaway as long as you possibly can. You know now it comes down to you got 11 to go here if you're Chase Elliott you got to get by Denny Hamlin and do it quickly if you're going to have any shot at Mark Truex Jr. as he drives away. Denny's done a great job of being mindful knowing what he has for a race car and taking that exit away from those guys. Ten laps to go. And I just love watching this. Just puts me back in that driver's seat. You know how methodical you've got to be, how much you're thinking about every move that the driver in front of you is making. What's their, what, you know, what weakness do they have? What strengths do you have? Where can I make my move? How can I get this done in these last ten laps? And all the while, you're on a razor's edge. And what I mean by that, you can see these brakes glow. And that thing we saw wheel hop at the left rear earlier in the race with Truex, actually, the guy that's leading. You are on a razor's edge getting into the corner and then treating that gas pedal like as an egg underneath of it getting off, not wheel spinning, not abusing your tires. Yeah, just running it right to the limit every, you know, through, through every foot of that corner. Yeah, guys, I can look at their brake pressure up to 600 pounds. Everybody, including Martin Trex Jr., they're going off the chart on the brake <laughs> pressure right now. All bets are off. Elliott had a look and now he is alongside Hamlin Chase Elliott who won here last fall to set up his run to win the national championship challenging for second right here when he just saw what Mark Trex Jr. had to do to get by Denny Hamlin it's going to take that same type of move where you got to get side by side with him, and then you're going to have to just run Denny Hamlin up the racetrack. Well, but you can tell he can get in the corner harder than him, but he can do it when he's straight. When you have to go in the corner and turn left to stay off that car on the outside of it, you got to be careful because you can get loose in, wheel hop, and take it out just like they did right there. That's Chase, it. There it is. Chase ran him up. He actually got a little loose while he was doing it. I think he got a little bit of wheel hop. He might get a favor back. Five to go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Amazing there how then Chase Elliott has the clean air, drives deep into the corner, got a little loose. 
Yeah, he's a loose again. He definitely got his brakes hot. Started getting loose. And meanwhile, Martin Truex Jr. loving this battle going on behind him. Truex unchallenged, second place very much still in doubt between Elliott and Hamlin. Good gap back to Byron. Larson with Logano, a car length behind him. Two to go. That's the first time I actually saw some glow coming from the rear tires on the nine car of Chase Elliott. Oh, there's a little glow there on the rear of uh, Truex also. So six these guys are off the pace. Hard on the brakes. White flag, though. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. They're going to have to get around Newman in two, and they do. Ryan Newman going to tough it out on three tires to the finish. And coming out of turn four for his 29th career win, he's why they call it Martinsville. Martin Truex will go to victory lane in the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. You called it, Jeff. Been pretty good at picking some winners this year. That, that's not been the case in the past. <laughs> Team effort right there. Beat him out of the pits. His teammate beat him on the on the outside right there. He was patient in the race car. That's hard to do, by the way. Utilized the track position and his opportunity went and won that race. Total team effort. It's Martin's third Martinsville win in his 31st start. Three of the last four races here. He's won five of his last 11 short track starts. After beginning his career, 0 for 80 on the short tracks. Burn it down, Martin. Pretty good old burn out here, Martin. Let it eat. <laughs> Great burnout. Third win of the year for Toyota. <laughs> I'm impressed. Somebody's throwing beer cans at him. <laughs> Perfectly say, did, good beer. Did, is, did he throw that out of his window? And oh, by the way, Truex has won two of the last three at Richmond, where we go next week. Man, tough pill to swallow if you're Ryan Blaney. Got back to 11th, but not the day that they hoped for, for sure. And now just think of all the laps Denny Hamlin led all day today when Ryan Blaney wasn't leading laps. And then it comes down to Mark Truex Jr. to get it done. Yeah, Joe Gibbs Racing led over 300 laps today. Johnny Morris is going to be happy tonight. Got him one. Denny Hamlin finishes third after leading more than half the race, 274 laps. In addition to the grandfather clock that awaits the winner, a nice tradition here at Martinsville is that victory lane is brought right to the start finish line for the fans to enjoy. Well, that was my favorite thing about that, Jeff. They didn't throw it at my car, though. They just handed it to me. It's the beer. You're close to the action, close to the fans. Regan. Well, it's all smiles down here for Martin Truex Jr. Heck of a burnout first off. Second off, you guys were just decent all day long, and all of a sudden at the end of this race, that car came to life. Yeah, it was uh, pretty incredible at the end there. Best Pro Toyota. Uh, James and the guys really hung with me all day. We. Never could quite get it the way we wanted it. started getting dark and she came to life. So um, thankful for uh, Reese's Fine Foods, Bass Pro Shops, all these great fans. Thank you all for coming out. I hope you enjoyed it. We love seeing you. And uh, man, just all our partners, Regan, you know, auto owners, Toyota, TRD, uh, Sherwin Williams, Texture on Aviation, uh, Noble Aerospace. We got so many people to help us out, but I can't believe we won here again after uh, not having the dominant car today for sure, but. That was a lot of fun there at the end, racing with Denny and 
we raced clean and we were able to come out on top. You mentioned racing with Denny at the end of the race right there. How difficult is that? When it's a teammate, <laughs> you know you're going to see him on Monday morning. How does that go? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's always difficult. We try to race hard, race clean, you know, and um, he was making it difficult on me. You know, I was loose getting, coming off the corners and his car got tight. So we kind of had opposite things going on and it made it difficult to pass. But we played nice and coach will be happy and uh, it'll be a cordial meeting tomorrow. <laughs> Well, Denny Hamlin was that dominant car, led 274 laps, and it came down to the end between you and Martin Truex Jr. In a perfect scenario, Denny, what could you have done differently or had differently to hold him off? You know, I, just that's the cards you're dealt. You know, we had a really good short run car. We just did not have a good long run car. And, you know, we saved a set of tires, which had a tire advantage. But, you know, um, man, it just couldn't couldn't get our car to really turn in the long run. That was the that was the bugaboo I guess you could say of it but overall the FedEx Camry team um, you know performed well we had a really fast car for 20 laps or so uh, and then it would just kind of go away so you know fortunate for us uh, we had a great day and stayed up front all the day and had ourselves a shot at it but just didn't uh, wasn't quite good enough. Right, Denny Hamlin breaks it home third today Mike. Thanks Jamie Martin Truex the winner for Toyota Chase Elliott second for Chevrolet uh, the first Ford was Joey Logano in sixth. More to come from Martinsville after a wild 500 laps. Twenty-nine career wins for the driver from Mayetta, New Jersey. Can't have Martinsville without Martin, can you? That'll change the standing some because Truex has just become the first double winner of this season. Still seven different winners. Hamlin, Elliott, Harvick, the first of those who have not been to victory lane. And the cut line moves from Alex Bowman to Kurt Busch at 16. Let's hear from the runner-up, Jamie. 
Chase Elliott wins here in the fall and today finishes second. You're coming on strong there at the end, Chase. Yeah. Did the car get better or was that just circumstance? Uh, I mean, I really felt like we were not perfect for sure all day, but we did make it better, I think, as the as the day went along. And, you know, the run was kind of that right distance for me there at the end to maximize it. I felt like if it was any longer than that, I was probably going to fade again, kind of like I had been all day. But uh, I really appreciate the effort. We worked really hard today to get, you know, get back to second. I feel like every, you know, uh, strategy call and circumstance just kind of went the other direction for us. And had a couple good restarts there. He had a good pit stop and made a good last adjustment just for a short run. Uh, but definitely need to be better. Um, our Napa team has been working hard. We've had a very eventful year, I feel like. So it's nice to just have a solid day, got some stage points, and got a good finish. So we'll try to try to go get them next week. Thanks, Chase. Yep. Ryan Blaney, certainly one of the strongest cars here today, in particular long runs, a tough break on that last pit stop. But how comforting is it to know how fast this race car was for when we come back here in the fall? Yeah, you know, it's really good. Uh, I'm going to always pins all four Mustang tonight. Um, the long runs were really good. You know, Danny was good on short runs. And I just kind of try to hold off the guys behind me until, you know, we got 20 or so laps in. And then I could kind of start creeping forward. Um, but yeah, then we just got that pit road penalty at the end. Uh, just a mistake and um, something that should be avoided. And it's happened. We've had an issue the last three times we've been here with a car to win, so that's frustrating. But um, overall, proud of the effort. Just wish we could close one out. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan Blaney had to restart 19th after this pit stop as the air hose gets caught underneath the left front and drags the air hose and the air gun out of the box. Had to restart 19th, got up to 10th, and then lost that 10th spot to Kyle Busch in the closing laps. And there is the cause of the penalty. So, fellas, <laughs> Clint, Jeff, help me sort this out because Denny Hamlin had great short run speed all day. Ryan Blaney had great long run speed all race. Martin Truex <laughs> gets to wind the clock. Well, I, I think that the track changed a lot. I think when the sun went down, the lights came on, I think not only the adjustments at Martin Truex Jr., let's be honest, this guy's a veteran. He's, he's won here twice in the past. He, he's won a bunch of races. He's won a championship. He knows how to race this place, and he did an excellent job using all that experience to his advantage today by making the right adjustments and letting the track come to him. And it just it was unfortunate for Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin, who dominated this race, that it didn't work out for them. Oh, the emotional roller coaster of Martinsville. You know that going into this thing, right? You check your emotions at the gate. That being said, look at the adversity all these teams had to go through. Uh, weather, rain out. Now that we're racing in the sun, we finish in the in the uh, the, the night where the track cooled off, like we heard Martin Truex say. All these things that these teams had to go through. Carnage on the racetrack. <laughs> the race flip flopping with the untimely cautions and everything. To see Martin Truex beat the guys that we thought were going to be the cars to beat with that 11 short run speed in the 12 with the long run speed total team effort with those guys by the way they beat him out of the pits put him in the front yeah and one last thing mike least amount of mistakes we saw yes. ryan blaney had a mistake martin trex jr and that team did not and as we discussed during the red flag i believe that number 19 car is pretty unmarked from everything that happened here today next week NASCAR is in Richmond, and we're back on Fox. And don't forget, every weeknight on FS1 NASCAR Race Up to catch you up with all the news about your favorite sport.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.